Hello, everybody. Welcome to Spitball in Episode 6. I'm here with my good buddy. Kyle Amundsen. And he is hung over as fuck today. Oh, man. You know, there's plenty of good reasons that I don't drink much. Uh, and, yeah, I uh, in the fucking hangovers, I have to remember this. I have, like, this, is, this shit's going to be burned into my brain, hopefully, so I just remember not to get drunk like that. Um, you know, and I didn't even really burn it down, man. It was, you know, pretty low key. You know, I think I was home at like midnight, but, <laughs> yeah. uh, I am just a big piece of shit today. I, uh, I mean, and it's, it's, you know, like a fuck. I hate fucking hate being hung over. I'm so fucking hung over. I like, don't even want to go to the bathroom cause I'm afraid I'm going to piss on myself. I mean, it's bad. I hear you. Yeah. I am not hung over. I feel, I feel fantastic. Well, fuck you then. <laughs> You know you're getting old when you're in bed by midnight, <laughs> and you and you and you have a uh, and you have like the hangover of the century. Oh God, you know. I mean, I, I can tell though this is gonna be like a one day one. Um, you know, for a while there, like when I still drank a little bit more, you know, I was, uh, you know, I was getting those like two or three day hangovers, which, you know, whatever. When you're in your twenties, awesome, good for you. Get <laughs> fucked up, you know. Because when you hit your 30 and, you know, like, you're like, oh, shit, you get in your 30s and you got, like, the two-day hangovers and stuff, you know, then, in, in, and it doesn't get any fucking better from there, unless you're, like, a seasoned pro, you know, I, but, fuck, yeah, miserable. I remember back in the day when um, I was training at the Warriors Alliance, um, I always had to run a Saturday morning class or noon, I think it was at noon, and uh, I remember I got wrecked one night and I, I, I was like, uh, okay, guys, today we're going to work on how to do jujitsu with a really bad hangover. And I was like, the key is to not move your head very much. And I was like, <laughs> and don't fucking touch me. <laughs> right. And uh, you would, could we turn the lights down and everybody just be very fucking quiet. So um, we got some headsets today. Uh, we, are have you know we this is an interesting process that we've gone through you know we've had a couple of equipment changes um but uh the last episode if you watched it, it was awesome it was hilarious uh, pj was fantastic it was such it, a good time it was it was probably one of the most fun three hours i've had in forever when i i was like uh working on putting the episode together that night and i was like what the fuck is going on my my ribs or my belly hurt because I was laughing so hard, um, but it was an awesome episode. But there was some technical issues, uh, mostly just uh, your big head not getting close enough to the microphone. Yeah, um, this is probably going to help because I can hear myself. Um, I like it already because uh, yeah, I fucking you know like I just my, my fucking wander away from the microphone and then you can't even hear me, and which is fucking tragic because I'm hilarious. <laughs> And my voice is sexy. So, Your voice is sexy. You know, yeah, I'm going to try not to get aroused in this one. So um, I went Try up to, all you want. <laughs> I went up to Zorba's on Friday night uh, and uh, to see you, and you weren't there yet. Um, but I got recognized. Absolutely. And it was, I, I tell you, I walked in, and I, I was actually looking for a toothpick because after I ate some pizza, I had, a, I, just, I had to have a toothpick. And I, I went up to uh, the bartender, and... I said, hey, do you, uh, and before I could even get it out, she goes, you're the, you're the podcast guy. And I was like, yes, I am. And like, I was just like, my dear friend nine. And I love you, sweetheart. I was just hovering out of the bar. I was so high. It was just (laughs) great. I got my toothpick though. So that was cool. Um, and then, uh, the other, and then on, on Thursday, um, I went, I got the opportunity to go up to the headwaters, um, to PJ's, uh, place. Um, just north of Hackensack, and dude, it is fucking amazing. Um, the food was fantastic. I mean, top notch. But the place itself is just gorgeous, overlooking the water. Um, I mean, it is a, a fantastic spot. Um, and then we were talking about always like coming up with ideas for podcasts or talking stuff you want to talk about on the podcast. And I was talking with Meta about something, and I'm like, God damn it, I got to remember to 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 talk about this on the podcast. And uh, she's like, oh, here, t- take, take a note on my phone. And I was like, oh, I don't know. And then I was like, oh, here, I'll tell you what. So I, uh, so I just recorded myself a little message and on her phone and sent it to myself because I don't know how to do anything. So I was just going to play it here. Not 
Remember on Sunday to talk about how you're a hypocrite and how you, like, kind of accept that about yourself, how, like, you totally think that, like, cesarean section is uh, undermining uh, the strength of the human race, and yet both your children were born by cesarean section, and you would kill an entire village to protect them. Also, uh, about how, like, you don't like words, like, you don't like the word bitch, and yet you continually refer to people as bitches, like in the last episode when you were talking to PJ about how, uh, about how you liked his fucking stroganoff, and you were like, bitches at the bar, we're eating my shit, like, those are words you don't like saying, but you fucking say them because you're a fucking hypocrite. You're an asshole. Knock it off. Bitch. <laughs> That's a very real thing. Um, I struggle with that myself. I, uh, you know, like, uh, I, I, I even meant to say something about that, you know, because I fucking, you know, I'm like, I'm always pontificating about shit. Like uh, when we talked about like Pride Month, you know. My, you know, I, how strongly I feel about that and everything, um, you know, and my extremely, uh, you know, like it, it's such a, you know, my, my really elevated ideas about that, you know, and coming from a guy that still uses the word faggot, you know, Ooh. once in a while. Mm, yeah, I that's mean, a tough one. It, I, it's, I hate that word. Man, me too. It's ugly. It's stupid. It's disrespectful, you know, and it's, you know, um, of course, you know, if I use it, that means, like, my blood's probably up and I'm trying to provoke someone, you know? Like, I'm, right. I don't, you know, I'd never use it to refer to, you know, a homosexual. Um, but, even but if I think that that person, you know, if I'm, like, basically, you know, if, if it was someone that I thought was going to be really offended by it, then I would, you know, then I might use it. And, yeah, I hate that word. I can hate that word. And yet you find it, yeah. And I, and I, oh, there's, I do not like that word either. Um, but, um, yeah, it's a really tough one to take words out of your, you know, vocabulary when that you don't like. And and bitches is one that I I mean, it just it's just a completely negative word and I don't like using it and I find myself using it quite often, too often. So, uh but Meta called me on it and uh I was like, I didn't say that. And you know, there's <laughs> it kind one thing that kind of sucks about doing a podcast that's, you know, three-ish hours long every week. Um, y- your girlfriend can fucking zing you on shit that, that you say, uh, and, like, there's a record of it. I can't argue. So she, like, pulls it up and plays it for me, and I'm like, oh, God damn it, I did refer to bitches. And not only did I refer to them as bitches, then I said, and then I, 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 I said, uh, you know, it was, it was, well, it was Brandy Road. She was the only one who got to, who got to eat my food. So I was calling her a bitch, like, specifically, and Brandy is such an awesome person. So oh, it just seems, seems like a bullshit thing. Um, and I think, especially with our guest today, um, we're going to have um, Ace um, Collie on. And uh, I don't know Ace at all, um, but what I know of him is that he's uh, cool. He works at a reservation, and he's a man of color. And uh, that's about the extent of my, uh, <laughs> of my in- information. You'll enjoy him. He's awesome. Good. Uh, we've been friends for a long time, um, but we'll, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get into all that. Um, yeah, I, uh, oh, before I forget, let me, let, let's get this out of the way. I, um, so I, I have a, I have something for you. Oh. Um, it's, uh, uh, it's, I've had this for, since October. Um, uh, if you watched episode one, you probably know that uh, uh, Matt um, was the officiant. Sure. Uh, less than efficient, but <laughs> definitely the, he was the, the officiant. Uh, he married uh, Christine and I uh, last October. And, uh, um, and we just, you know, it was just a small gift, um, a, a, a token of our esteem. Um, actually, she's the one that handles stuff like that. Of you know, course. Um, and, uh, you know, because Matt did a fantastic job, you know, um, wouldn't take any money for it. Um, mostly because I didn't offer him any, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but I do have this. So let me, oh, let me see if I can yank this headset out of the, oh. just take your headset off. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Growing pains. 
Okay. Hmm. It's a little beat up because, like I said, it's been mostly riding around in my car since October. Oh, look at this. It's a Yeti coffee cup. You know. Very, very nice. Christine's a coffee drinker, too. Um, you know, so. Yeah, these are a, badass. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And really they're really expensive. Products. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank so, you. you. Thank you, you very much. Awesome. Well, then I just decided to do it on here so Christine could see, um, you know, so uh, because she's in uh, Cape Cod right now uh, with her, her family, uh, her um, Boston fam. Um, they, uh, they go to Cape Cod every year. Um, yeah, I saw that she uh, named her dinner. Uh, she got a big... Uh, <laughs> that big old lobster. Big lobster, and she <laughs> named it. And I thought that was pretty funny. She cracks me up. She is. She's good shit. Oh, she is wonderful. Um, and that's actually... This is Flat Kyle. Uh, she oh. forgot Flat Kyle this time. She took it with her last time and had, you know, great pictures. Um, uh, she, yeah, well, the, the week that they always go... So Provincetown is the town they stay right by, um, and uh, I was supposed to initially go with her uh, last year. I have not made the trip yet, um, but uh, uh, and she was like, "Yeah," she's like, "And it's, she's like, it'll be fun. It's Bear Week in Provincetown," and I'm like, "Oh, bears are awesome, you know? Like, do they have like a zoo in town, or like uh, what?" Uh, uh, you know, and I'm like, or is it just like a bunch of uh, burly gay men? That's a, that's what it wound up being. Yeah, you're shitting me. No, like these guys just like take over the town, and I'm like, awesome. You know, like how fun? With how fun is that? You know, like, and uh, so like she's got all the like like flat Kyle pictures with all these groups of dudes, you know, and and she's like, man, she's like, you were very popular. She's like, everybody <laughs> wanted to know where real Kyle was because. <laughs> she, like, she mentioned in one of the pictures, she's like, yeah, they kept using the word yummy. And I'm like, oh, well, thank you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, so she's out there right now. Um, one, of these, <laughs> one of these years, I am going to go out there. And uh, uh, well, hopefully next year, because um, I really enjoy her family. And, uh, uh, you know, and <laughs> Bear Week sounds awesome. I, I, man, I, you think I could just, like, come along in your luggage or something? Right. We, I, can, we can do a show from there. That would be great. We should. <laughs> we should. I, uh. Uh, I think Bear Week sounds fantastic. I got the chaps for it and everything. Um, I have a buddy. Um, the assless chaps? <laughs> yes. Yes. Bye. Oh, they are ass assless. Fucking chaps are assless. That's why they're not pants. Yes. We've talked true. about this. Before. We have talked about this. Um, I have a buddy that is gay, and I was talking to him about, um, I, I said, oh, am I a bear? You know, because I'm furry. And he's like, no, you're not nearly big enough. And I said, well, well then, what, what am I? And he goes, you're an otter. And I was like, fuck yeah, Never dog. Heard of that. I could totally be an otter. I don't know if he was making it up because I have mentioned it to a few other um, people who, um, you know, are in that. Uh, I can't think of any word. Community. To, community. There you go. Community. Good fucking word. Good word. I was, yeah. Some, you know, I was going to go with group and I thought, God, maybe that's, I don't know, not inclusive. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. They they were like, I think he was just, I think he was just hitting on you. But I was like, that's fine with me. I I fucking I I I hate it when gay guys don't think I'm attractive. It really I bothers me. I'm bothered by that too. Uh, you know, there's <laughs> it always like it cracks me up when when dudes are like, well, it better not hit on me. You know, and it's usually some greasy like super unattractive dude that's so worried about you know being hit on. Um, I actually. Uh, when I lived in St. Paul, um, I was the only uh, I was the only straight guy in the house. Um, for a while, I was the only guy. I was the only white guy for a while. I was the only straight dude. Um, and uh, finally, like I had to ask um, my roommate uh, Tiana. Um, she kind of ran the house. I was like, "How come none of your friends ever hit on me? You know, am I not pretty?" And she's like, "Oh no, honey. She's like, you're pretty." I was young then. I was I was I was a much better looking man. Um, but she's like, she's like, but she's like, our gaydar is much better than a straight person's. She's like, you are obviously straight. And I'm like, oh, well, okay. I accept that. She's like, yeah. She's like, don't take it personal. And I'm like, okay. Cause like, dude, I like, <clears throat> I don't give a shit who hits on me. I like the attention. Right. Um, I mean, uh, like if, if your dog comes to my leg, I'm grateful for the attention. I mean, I'm an attention whore big time. Everybody knows that about me. Um, but yeah, I, uh, you know, I, I appreciate it. You know, it, like it, it seems, doesn't happen very fucking often. It seems you know? weird to me that I don't get offended if, uh, if a, if a girl doesn't think that I'm attractive. I mean, I'm like, man, whatever. Well, 
to each their own. I fucking know I'm attractive, so <laughs> whatever. I mean, <laughs> bitch is blind. See, I did it again. I couldn't come up with another word. <laughs> but, I mean, it was just for the alliteration. I did that only for the alliteration. It was the only reason. But, uh, but yeah, if a, if, a, if a gay guy doesn't think I'm attractive, I'm like, what? What's wrong with me? <laughs> Start sucking it in the gut <laughs> and put, push it off the chest. So like, Next time you see him, you're wearing like Daisy Dukes <laughs> and a half right. shirt and shit like that, just right. working it, trying to get hit on. Uh, that was uh, uh, Always Sunny in Philadelphia. I, a very uh, funny show. There was, they didn't, I've yeah. only seen a few episodes of it. And <laughs> it's one of those shows that everybody who I really like, like, and I know we have the same sense of humor like you, always tell me it's so fucking funny. And, uh, and I, every episode I've seen, I've really liked, but. I have a really hard time watching comedy shows. Um, Me too. I uh, I need somebody there to like to watch them with. With right. Well, we talked about stand up. You know, like I love stand up, but I can't watch it by myself. It, and ma- usually it makes me feel sad. That's the, like it, like if I watch uh, even something like The Office by myself, I'm like I'm I'm so lonely. You know, and it's that's such a weird thing. So I'll, I'll get. Well, I just hate to like like not enjoy the jokes and stuff as much as I could. Yeah, because I don't and laugh. They're like ruined. Yeah. As much. Oh, that's one of the magical things about going to comedy clubs, you know, like there's nothing better than just being in a room full of people. I mean, the joke might be like, like, you know, just mediocre funny. But I mean, if other people are around you laughing, you know, it's just, you know, that it's just that environment and stuff, you know, and those people enjoying themselves like that. <laughs> it just feels good, you know. You know, I didn't, I didn't think about that, but you're probably right. The reason that I don't like watching um, shows, comedy shows anyway, by myself, is because not so much that I get sad, though I do get sad. It's be, it's probably because I don't laugh, because I, I don't think I, I can't think of sitting there like laughing by myself. Weird, interesting. I didn't think about that, but you're right about comedy shows, man. Like you get into a big a, a room. Um, and where the, that energy is just like, and that's like the most fun. What, it's super duper fun to be on the stage when you yeah, get that. Yeah, Matt's done stand up. Um, I could never do stand up. I don't believe that. I think you could do fantastic at stand up. <laughs> I think you're hilarious on here. And most of the people. I agree. <laughs> but. <laughs> well, maybe we have to do a duel. Well, yeah. we are going to do not stand up. We kind but of we, do. Practically, this kind I mean, of is stand up, but. Um, uh, there is a uh, a plan in the works that's and and I don't want to reveal anything, but there's a plan in the works that um, Meta talked to you about apparently, and then has apparently has already been approved by the board that doesn't exist. But we're sp- we're going to be putting together some kind of live show um, at some point. Yeah, she mentioned that, and, and she, I, uh, you yeah. know, which I mean, whatever, I'm down for anything. I mean, we could, you know, uh, I was, uh, you know, we talked about doing a li- doing the show live. Um, initially, and but I was uh, so I had reservations because uh, I thought we were going to have to do a lot of editing. Um, and by we, I mean Matt, because I don't, you know, I'm a, f- I'm a goddamn idiot when it comes to all things technical. Like I can't even program my VCR. <laughs> uh, old man joke. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, so but but, <laughs> yeah, but we we don't. Right. We're always unfiltered all the time, you know, like, so we, well, fuck it, why wouldn't we? Yeah, the only something? editing I ever do is just put the beginning and the end on and then do a little... Uh, and mess with my sound, you know, c- to get me in the show because I'm always wandering the fuck away from the microphone. That is true. So now we got headsets. Uh, yeah, it's going to be fun. We're, we haven't got a venue set up or anything like that, but, uh, you know, we're going to actually have, like, a, like, people there, like an audience, and they're going to interact and ask questions. I thought you knew all about this because she told me, like, you and her had talked about it in depth yeah, uh, yeah. and, like, I it mean, was all worked out. So I was like, hey, I'll do whatever Kyle tells me to do hey, because I'm a She mentioned of. it, and it is, it's, a, it's a great idea. Um, I know. think it would be super fun. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I don't have any reservations about being live. Um, uh, I, th- I think we're fucking funny. Um, and if people don't, I don't, I don't really care. So, <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I have done. Why the st- fuck are you watching the show? I have done stand up uh, probably about a dozen times and with mixed success. Um, but there was one night um, where I opened for a guy who was the uh, the runner up on Last Comic Standing. And I can't remember his name, but he was he was really funny. Um, but it was a huge crowd. Um, it was in the basement of the old iron rail. Oh, yeah. um, and it was packed. There was like, I don't even know, like mm, close to 400 people there. And, uh, 
And that would be, I think that's the only night I could say where I killed. And I, like, people were laughing, like, you know, like convulsively laughing. And it awesome. was, that was fun. That was super fun. Cool. What else you got on your little list, you disty? Um, well, I was going <laughs> to. I was just going to take a second because uh, um, we like to plug, you know, shows that we watch and books that you read, uh, <laughs> uh, shit like that. Um, and uh, uh, Altered Carbon. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> my Today's nerd shirt. Um, fucking amazing. Um, <laughs> you've read the books. Yeah, they're I awesome. I've not read the books. Um, uh, but uh, the... Uh, was it Netflix? Yeah, it's Netflix. Yeah, I think uh, it's that Netflix, uh, um, one, like one, like one and out. I guess the show is, um, but it's got you know once one season, um, but it's fucking amazing. It it's is rich. really neat, and it gets really into some class uh, uh, issues. You know, uh, I don't want to like wreck the premise of the show because just the premise is really interesting, but. Um, yeah, there's some definite, uh, you know, it's near future and there's some real, well, it's actually not that near future, but there's some real class divides and, uh, uh, it just, it, it really tackles some interesting issues. Also, um, have you ever seen the, uh, uh, Netflix original movie, uh, Bright? It has, um, yeah, yeah. Did you watch that with Will Smith? Yeah. I fucking loved it. It was, I liked it too, but it was like fucking like just roasted by the critics and and stuff. I I was was like, like. what the fuck really? are you talking about? Because I thought it was just like bad boys, you know, but with orcs yeah. and fucking super uh, cool and elves and magic. And it was so good. But it also and I didn't I felt like they weren't really heavy handed in it, but it really took on uh, issues of race. And we're talking about different actual races that yes. you know can't even interbreed so it was it was really neat i heard i hear that there's a uh a, a second movie in the works um that would be great and i yeah i think it'd be great i thought it was fantastic if you um it, it it's not uh uh you know gonna win any like you know academy awards but it was you know i mean will smith's great it's funny always good and uh super exciting and really interesting premise and i definitely suggest it all right. Well, should we uh, take yeah. a quick break? Let's uh, take a quick break. We'll get Ace in here and we'll we'll talk him up. All right. Fantastic. We'll rock on. All right. See you in a minute. In a minute. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Spitball. I'm here with my good buddy. Kyle Amundsen. And today in the house, we have Ace Collie. How are you doing, Ace? Good, good. Good, man. So uh, like we were saying uh, before, uh, I uh, I don't know anything about you. Uh, what's your deal? Hmm. Deal about what? I, don't <laughs> I mean, know. <laughs> just another guy that got stuck in good old Brainerd, Minnesota. That's all. <laughs> well, that's a that's a good place to start. Why the fuck would you choose uh, to live in um in Brainerd, Minnesota? It was so random. It, it, it's kind of funny because like I bartend and I tell guys all the time. They're like, "Where are you from? You're not from around here, are you?" I'm like, "Now nah, I'm from Miami," and they're like, "Miami." how the hell did you leave Miami to come to Minnesota? <laughs> and it's like, it wasn't my intentions to like make this a long-term thing. It just kind of happened Went with life. Um, I played football and stuff. Wanted to get away from Miami actually. Cause, uh, it's not South beach, you know, all the, the <laughs> girls and glitz and glam. Yeah, it's there, but, um, you do have a lot of other things that goes on down there. <laughs> I grew up in the inner city in Liberty city actually to be exact. And, uh, I want to get away from it for a bit, so I actually went to college, and my getting away was almost equivalent to a person from Minnesota um, going like a couple hours away from home. So I was in Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, kind of hated it there, too. <laughs> I actually was like, uh, I left Miami to get away from some of the same stuff that was going on in Jacksonville. So a cousin of mine randomly was like, hey, um, let's go to Minnesota and play football. And I'm like, what's, what's in Minnesota? And uh, we have a college down there called Miami Dade. It's a two-year college or whatever like that. So he's like, it's basically like a Miami Dade, uh, but with football teams. <laughs> so I was like, sure, we'll go up there. But we knew a lot of people, apparently, because Minnesota recruited a lot of people from Florida. Really? Yeah. And I didn't want to be at a school where I knew someone at, because I'm like, I already got a year in from my college in Jacksonville. I wanted to get the hell up out of here and be done. Um, so I came up here and... It was crazy. <laughs> we'll get to probably some of that later on, but <laughs> I had some pretty interesting experiences. Um, 
But I did my schooling up here. Once I finished up, I went down to Wayne, Nebraska, and um, went to Wayne State. Um, came back here, found a job right away. It was much easier. I knew a lot of people, had a lot of connections. So now I'm living in good old Brainerd. So you went, where, where did you go to school when you came here? Central Lake College. Oh, okay. Yep. You went to CLC. Yep. And then you played football there? And football and baseball. Very stippy, stereotypical of you. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> and it happens yeah, a lot. You know, whatever. You played football, didn't you? <laughs> you fucking said you played football. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I said ball, but okay, yeah. I probably I did. I could have. There's only one kind of ball. <laughs> <laughs> now I played football and baseball for the college. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Yeah, I've, uh, I've known Ace for a long time. Um, we actually met uh, when I was uh, in uh, Boys to Men. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's uh, so brother, <laughs> Juan Ye. So um, we like we've known each other from like football and the gym and stuff like that. Um, and uh, uh, a friend of mine, um, my friend Trina, my lifelong friend, um, she uh, she got a hold of me one time and uh, on Facebook, and she was like, she's like, man, she's like, I can't fucking. She watches. Uh, she was talking about the show Dancing with the Stars. She's like, I can't take this shit seriously. She's like, every time. Wani Morris comes on. Uh, Wani Morris from uh, Boys to Men. Uh, she's like, every time Wani Morris comes on the fucking TV, I th- I'm like, it's your, it's Kyle's damn doppelganger. Like, you're like, is. It's <laughs> yep. and and then uh, and then uh, Ace. I told Ace about it, and uh, he made this fucking. It was like he took a picture of me and a picture of him. Like, oh, I forgot sad, about that. that was the side by side little meme I did. Of and I was like, damn. Okay, that you, guy you, does You got to like Google him. He looks... <laughs> I'm going to have to do that. I'm going to have to do that. Uh, Maybe shit. we'll do it. And uh, <laughs> so, so uh, you know, so I was like, oh, yeah, cool. So, mate, yeah, I look, I look like a celebrity. Um, the reason I bring that up is because apparently Ace looks like a lot of celebrities. Oh, man. Don't well, get me started with that. <laughs> Ace looks like... Oh, my God. It's, yeah. It's show it to the camera. <laughs> That's yeah, I that, hope someone I, can I, see I, that. I'm pretty sure that won't get us kicked off YouTube, but yeah, who knows? Uh, you know. um, free advertising. Yeah, that looks him. just like you. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so uh, that, that's one thing that I uh, that I wanted to. I actually got. I have it on my list here. Um, one of the things that uh, uh, that I wanted to mention um, that uh, like the celebrity thing. Yeah, yeah. People, are, in, in case you don't know this, um, <laughs> like around here we don't have a huge african-american community and people get awkward as fuck it does. It um, does and i mean like so who okay i know um i remember uh the um uh let's see the corner from the vikings uh, <laughs> oh yeah that happened to me trey waynes trey waynes yeah yep I, w- I was at uh the casino out in uh actually it was walker minnesota and the um, dealers and the management staff kept staring at me. And I'm like, okay, well, I didn't steal anything. It's not <laughs> like I'm counting cards and winning a lot of money either. So then eventually, uh, the, one of the guys finally works in nerves. He comes over and he goes, hey, man, um, are you Trey Waynes? And I'm like, no. Mind you, I'm only like, what, 5'9 on a good day? <laughs> <laughs> Trey look, Waynes about six foot yeah, something. And look, no, you guys look nothing alike. Yeah. So he, he was adamant. They did not believe that I was not Trey Waynes. Uh, it, it, so everybody. Do, do you ever like play that shit up and just like get a room comped and like, you know? And <laughs> well, I did get drinks because they thought that I was straight away, so somebody bought me a drink. But um, and you're signing people's breasts actually, and shit? No, <laughs> the one time I actually ran with it was back in my college days. We went down to Mankato, me and a buddy of mine, Jamal, six, six, 300 something pounds, ideal Jamal's specimen for an man. athlete. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> he, every time we went somewhere, people would think he was my security guard. So a lot of people, well, out there don't know. You might see me now with a low cut, but I had dreads for like 14 years. So um, I was the guy from Oz, the show Oz in the wheelchair. It, sure. It, the, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I forgot his name. Um, and then I was uh, the guy from Twilight who always wears no shirt with the dreads up and all that <laughs> stuff. You know, I, I was, but he would always tell people, I forgot what his guy's name was, and I apologize. Um, but Jamal would always tell them I was like him or, oh, this is Lil Wayne. That was one of them, Mall of America. I had some kids chase me around Mall of America because my buddy really made them believe that I was Lil Wayne. Yep. It did not stop. It, it lasted for a while. Like, we finally lost him in a couple of stories. We were laughing and playing it off for a bit, but it, it's a good time. <laughs> People are so fucking awkward. And, and I think that 
that's I mean, that probably didn't happen to you when you were in Miami. No, not at all. (laughs) (laughs) Not at all. Remember that thing we used to do? um, The, uh, hey, get your own black friends. Oh, this was was beautiful. So for a while, Kyle, (laughs) he's been trying to get me to work at his job. (laughs) But he sees things that goes on. So Kyle's like, man, Ace, I don't understand how you don't get in more fights here at this place. He was like, I see the stuff you go through and what people come up to you and say, and I was like, yeah, it's, it's really crazy and ridiculous because you, you always get people that have these dumb things to say. Now, I joke about my blackness. I'm black. That's OK. It's, you know, but, you know, you get people that come up to you and say stupid shit. And it's just like, like what? Like what? What? I mean, shit? You know, like usually like pretty, you know, like, I mean, they mean well. Yeah. They're just awkward. Oh, you know? Well, like, the, when I have my hair, the, some guys would just come up to me and like touch my hair. Well, that's oh my pretty God. like. Come on. <laughs> like, I don't know you. I don't want you just rubbing your hands through my hair or then they'll pat you on the back and, and same the lookalike stuff or, you know, it's, it was just always some craziness. So um, Kyle and I, we all went out one day and we were drinking at his job and um, <laughs> it was hilarious. This guy comes up to us. He keeps talking to us and telling us what we look alike. And then you get all the bro, the bro, <laughs> dude. You know, I'm down, all that stuff. And it's like, come on. Like, I like Kyle. He doesn't do all that stuff. I love people for who you are. You don't have to pretend to be something or pretend to be a certain, like, specific, what you think the ideal culture is like being black. Not everybody says bro and dude and all that stuff. But you get all that crazy stuff. And then, um, so the guy came up to us. He was talking. I can't remember exactly what he was saying. But it was, it, it got pretty interesting. So Kyle, being Kyle, <laughs> he comes up to the guy and, and he said that. He was like, next guy comes up to you guys, I'm gonna um, make them leave. Cause he was like, this is ridiculous. And it kept happening. It happens all night long when we go out. You know, me, I have dreads, my other buddy has dreads. So people just coming up to us, talking to us. And then it's like, oh, get out there and show those white boys how to dance. I think that's what one of the things he was saying. Cause there was some music coming on Fucking and you got chicks awkward. dancing and we're people watching, of course, it's funny. So he's like, oh, get out there and show those white boys how to dance. It's like, nah, we're cool, we don't wanna dance. And he was like, come on, man, show them out. So then Kyle comes, save the day. <laughs> he goes, <laughs> I gotta do this with a straight face cause he did it with a straight face. And Kyle's a big dude, so it was even more funny. So he comes up to the guy and says, you know what? These are my black friends. He was like, you think I went all the way to the hood to go find these motherfuckers <laughs> just for you to come in and try to take them away? That, go find your own black friends. <laughs> <laughs> the look on this guy's face uh, was hilarious. He was, he was needless to say, scared of shit. He goes, <laughs> my bad, man, and walks away. <laughs> so, so that kind of became like a reoccurring thing. That you know, like uh, fucking uh, hilarious. Our buddy, our buddy Cash, uh, like he, we, we did that a couple of I times. I know Cash. Too. Yeah. He, uh, you know, because he'd be, he'd be like, Kyle, Kyle, I need you. Yeah. <laughs> so whenever we're out, he knows. Hey, Kyle, <laughs> Kyle, give him a little signal. Come over. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, but so when I had dreads, it was it was always like lookalikes, and now I have my hair cut, and oh, you you remind me of a uh, Kevin Hart, that one comedian, and I'm like. We look nothing not alike. Not even a fucking little. Yeah. And then, uh, what was and then my beard. I had So my barber shaved my beard a little lower than I wanted. I love my barber, but that was his one mistake. He messed up. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it was James Harden. That, one, that was the main thing that I had for a long time when I cut it. James Harden. Oh, man. Is that James Harden? Are you James Harden? It's like, no. Yeah. No. That dude's a foot taller, you know, like a like a foot taller. Yeah, like <laughs> the only the only thing I ever get confused for is the the dude, um, the never nude dude from, uh, uh, I don't ever watch the show Arrested Development. You ever watch Arrested Development? No. Oh no. fuck! I yeah, I can't remember the guy's name, but he's not cool. He's <laughs> fucking not cool at all. And well, they're like, "Are you that? You look so. That's like your doppelganger." I'm like, the the guy is a fucking dork <laughs> awesome yeah i don't know any of my uh celebrity look likes personally but uh i mean i wish i had their salaries that's all i can say pretty much right <laughs> you could just stop somewhere and pick up one of their checks you know it's uh, fucking crazy um so one thing i wanted to ask you about we haven't talked about this in a while um so you're into like like you're always dressed well and shit you're into fashion yep um, is that still something that uh, is in the cards for you? Like, yeah, you still that's definitely something I still want to do. So you're black and gay? 
<laughs> no, I, that, <laughs> hey, that happened once. <laughs> I guess you can't be a black man and look great without being gay. <laughs> Um, oh my gosh! I can go on and on with the stereotypes. So what? 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 What are you doing with fashion then? Uh, I'm working on starting my own fitness apparel line. It's oh, going to really? be called Apis Apparel. Uh, the name is an e- Egyptian deity, which is uh, a, the bull. If you ever see like the bull depicted with the um, little sun between the horns, um, that's the Apis bull, and uh, mm-hmm. it symbolizes strength. And um, I, I already have a logo. I should have brought a hat. I'd, usually wear a hat but i just got this fresh haircut so <laughs> <laughs> looks wonderful <laughs> no but um i i kind of took a, a a route of i wanted to take some time because i really wanted to learn everything i can about the industry um what fabrics i like most um i wanted to know what print was best because there's different um graphic screen print you can um they have direct to garment machines it's a ton about the whole industry that um, one could learn. So I took some time to really, really get in tune with a lot of the, the logistics behind the whole business because when I go in, I wanted to set myself up for more success and I didn't want to be able to be screwed over. Because right. you know, you go to some print shops and it's like, oh yeah, this is what we do. And it's like, it might not be the ideal stuff for what you're trying to do or what you envision. And I kind of had that snag at first. I got some hats made and found out the company later on didn't do independent labels the hard way, and we, even though we talked about it. Um, so then I had to go print and put labels in the hats myself. Huh. So and, and you kind of want a one-stop shop, you know, because... Um, so yeah. have you actually started the clothing line? I, samples. I've done okay. samples, Sample. which only I wear. And then, I, like, I have some hats made. Um, I've given them out to, like, family members and friends and stuff like that. But I haven't got there. My plan is I, within this... Within a year from now, I definitely want to get something going. My biggest thing was I was doing it all by myself. Um, no loans, no partners or nothing like that. It's kind of tough to get people... Um, believing in something that you believe in right and and it was just kind of it was something I've always wanted to do I always wanted to do fashion or some type of like clothing line when I was um, in high school and stuff because you know I won best dressed in school I always was big into like the trends and in Miami you have to dress really good I know you see the scene on the (laughs) movies it's all about that stuff Um, so I kind of got into it and and I thought it was really something that I was interested in and so uh, hopefully I can get it going soon. And like I said, I, I, the biggest thing, I was trying to do it all by myself and save up all of the money at once and then start it. But now I decided that the smarter option would be to start buying little bits and pieces of inventory bit by bit by bit and then start it. So okay. that's that's the avenue I'm taking right now. And then eventually you want to what? Uh, sell it in stores you want to have yeah, your own i don't store i don't want to have a store um there's yeah. too much overhead cost for a store I, it's uh, mine will probably be all it's online, online yeah it's it's i mean the way social media and everything is right now it's so much free marketing that you know you word of mouth you know you get the right person in your stuff and things can take off from there uh, having an actual store maybe that would be something later on down the line if things go good some of the best advice somebody told me was to um it was a business guy from this local area, actually, and he told me to keep it as a hobby and let it grow into something more. You know, too many people go head first and then quit their jobs and try to live off of that that business that you're starting in. And that's some of the reason why some of them fail, because you can't sustain that lifestyle that you you have to live and keep up with inventory and you start not seeing your profits as much. So, right. Yeah, that's yeah, well, very true. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I've gone broke several times in my life. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm an expert on going broke. Um, that's interesting. Well, you know, um, there's these two. Um, can you can you do anything for like old bald white guys? Because like uh, old know, like, bald white you guys, could, uh, I want to do everything, you man. Could, uh, I want backpacks. I want gym bags. Uh, just to, anything you see in. Um, it doesn't even. It's. I started with the whole idea of a fitness apparel line, but you see uh, um, women in yoga pants and all, everything nowadays, and. I mean, not all of them work out. I so so yeah. it's just a market oh, right. that, you know, a lot of people, oh. it's, it's trendy regardless. Even the T-shirts, you yeah. know, just random T-shirts, I mean, dad hats, everything. Back in the day, like um, Under Armour, you know, like w- like I, I do jujitsu and, you know, uh-huh. and like Under Armour was like really, they had really quality, you know, like rash guards. And I mean, Jesus Christ, now, every, you know, un- un- Under Armour's everywhere. Everywhere. And, uh, 
Um, yeah, and now rash guard, guys wear uh, like rash guards out to the bar and shit like that. So. Yeah, so <laughs> weird. weird. I, mean, I, I think that's only here. I don't know. I, I, is it? Because I'm not sure. I don't know the whole the whole fight industry. Uh, yeah, it took off. Like it took, it off, took off. Yeah, and like the whole foil affliction shirts. Yeah, were that's just what I was gonna ridiculous. say. Ridiculous. The I'm ready to fight shirt. Yeah, like, American, <laughs> American fighter. They fighter. only make them in mediums. And, <laughs> in <laughs> mediums. <laughs> I I used to wear um, <clears throat> gym shirts and fight shirts all the time, but like like Brock would give me, yeah. uh, you know. Um, he uh, he was sponsored by Warrior Wear, I, so I just have, and then <clears throat> that started becoming so. And I was just like, oh my god, I'm never wearing anything like that, like again. that out. Yeah, to the, you know, yeah. Out, you know, I mean, I might wear it, but I'm not gonna ever wear it out to the bar. Well, because then you get that the idiots. Well, because I, yeah. I look like a douchebag. That's yeah. what actually yeah. happens. Because the rest I mean, of them are douchebags. You kind of have to like round out that uh, that that American fighter look uh, with uh, a pair of like jeans with sparkles on the ass yeah stuff. usually but isn't that um, what you wear with them like those silver jeans the men's silvers um, and the, or no or what, what the hell are they called um oh like no rock, or rock, rock and republic or something, Revival? Like something yeah. yeah yeah but uh you you, yeah. you don't have a pair um, so you didn't complete your look. okay so you didn't complete your look that was i'm not even like i'm not even <laughs> i'm not even fashionable enough to dress like a douchebag <laughs> like i am like the opposite of i mean Shorts, sandals, t-shirt. It's like the fucking uniform. Although I do have, uh, like, that whole, like, like you mentioned fabrics. Like, I am ridiculous about t-shirts. Got to be cotton poly blend. Yep. Yep. So I, uh, I am so unfashionable that I, uh, w- I was getting jealous of Kyle's awesome fucking t-shirt collection. Because every, <laughs> oh, <week, yeah. laughs> every week he wears a new cool t-shirt. Yeah. And I was like... And so I la- last week, I think it was last week, I uh, I stole one of my son's T-shirts, like a Star Wars T-shirt that was pretty cool. <laughs> and I was like, you know, you wore it to impress Kyle. Um, well, d- I'm not. Imp- <laughs> I just didn't want. <laughs> you know. Anyway, so I was I was, I was bitching about this to my girlfriend, and I said, I gotta fucking, I gotta go like clothes shopping, and I d- I don't go clothes shopping, right? But I, I gotta go clothes shopping. I gotta get some fucking T-shirts, so I can like. So I have cool T-shirts too, because Kyle's got cool yeah. T-shirts, and I don't have fucking I don't I don't have any cool T-shirts. And she's like, "Well, I'll get you T-shirts." Oh. And I oh. said, "I said, job filled. Did you, it work out? You pr- you provide the T-shirt, and I will wear it." And this morning, she drops off this fucking T-shirt. Oh, <laughs> so that's the story of the shirt. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> you know, I'm. I'm going on there with a black guy, right? And she's like, <laughs> yeah. And I was like, oh, great. Thanks for making that fucking uncomfortable. You know? And 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 I was, uh, and she's like, well, you don't have to wear it. And I was like, well, I gave you the job of getting me the T-shirts. I'm not going to not then wear the T-shirt. So I'll just go be uncomfortable. <laughs> There's nothing so, uncomfortable about that. Uh, there was zero chance I would have wore this T-shirt <laughs> uh, of my own uh, free will. See, um, so then the question is, what made her buy that shirt for you did she know that you were going to be on she uh owns it was her shirt i mean she had the shirt and gave it to me so um and um and and her brother's black so like and i don't even know if that's why she bought the fucking t-shirt but like it was just her statement and i think that that's it's a totally cool statement and i do think that people uh uh people's fear of 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 black men is irrational well Um, it's just Fear, period. It's just so right. the ignorance behind it. That's pretty much what it comes down to. A lot of people are they. If you're scared of things you don't know, you, right. you have that that yeah. factor, and and um, that's that's just it comes with the territory. <laughs> right. Actually, so I wore a shirt um on the Fourth of July, and it was um the it was the fourth, so it said four and th, and it had a noose around the t. So a lot of people probably scowled at my shirt and stuff you know it's not that many black people in Brainerd and then um somebody asked me um so I don't understand the shirt what's the deal with it and I'm like well because everyone celebrates the 4th of July as Independence Day but do you understand that black people weren't free and independent when the declaration was signed in 1776 I was like actually um the black Independence Day is June 19th which is Juneteenth because um slaves weren't like officially free until about 1862 huh yeah well i mean in 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 some sense we still weren't completely free but that's when it was signed off to to give us actually rights because we weren't even able to be like um 
seen as citizens or anything even right. until 1862. That's when um, I think it was Lincoln that signed uh, something that um, made that official at that time. So that and it wasn't to be a dick. Um, I'm sometimes I actually like making some people feel uncomfortable, but it's more so about educating people too. And I met some really great people that um, uh, Bill the smoothies. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. great guy. So um, we had these really great sponsors um, for our semi-pro team because I played some football up here, and that's part of how me and Kyle had a great relationship with each other. Oh, you played with the lumberjack, and yeah, Tony Martin, yeah, played oh. with all of them. Okay. So um, um, we were out celebrating our championship game. Uh, you know, they took us out and took us to the strip club, and then we came back and we they had us set up at a place for dinner and everything like that. And it was so kind of cool to see like the aha moment on Bill's face. He goes, you know what, out of the blue, we are just sitting around and talking, and he's like, you know what, I gotta apologize to you. And I was like, for what? And he was like, you know, all my life, I've hated black people, for, and I had no real reason. I'm just this dumb, hick, white guy. He was like, you know, I, I can barely read, but I can work my butt off of my hands, and that's why I have so much money, and that's why I do good for myself. But he was like, you know, meeting you changed my perspective of things. He was like, you know, you've done nothing but give me the shirt off your back. And you've done so much to make me feel comfortable and as like family, even being around this team and educating me on some things because he didn't know a ton about uh, the football aspect and stuff. And um, that was really big to me. Yeah. And, that's the, that's, and that shows you like some people, it, it's, that's why I feel like sometimes it becomes an excuse about how people look at things because right. you have a choice to change. Right. And you, you make that decision. And at that moment he made that decision that, you know what? I I always had this issue and fear of something that I didn't even know. I he probably never knew a black guy until then, and then it changed his mind. You know, there's idiots from every damn race. For sure. You know, yeah. and I mean, <laughs> in, humongous ones. And one of the you know one of the weird things about you know the, like the about race. One of the things that I, I kind of struggle with, you know, because everybody's got you know you are not your biases. You know, um, and everybody's got biases everybody's got preconceived ideas and feelings and stuff like that um and you know it's it's we, we've, we've, we've all got our different stuff you know um mine you know mine just fall differently than, than than a lot of other people's um but uh like there's so much stigma involved with all that stuff now like um i feel like a lot of people can't even work on their shit because you can't admit to that issue. yeah because yeah. the last thing anybody wants to be seen as is, is a racist. Like a racist yeah and, w and like in the episode when we we had our buddy Tharg on and uh um yeah well, what we said we maybe we should just change the name of the podcast to three libtards um, <laughs> but um you know both kyle and Tharg and, and myself are pretty liberal um but um they we i don't know exactly how we got into it but 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 both kyle and Tharg were talking about how they um, you know, used to kind of be fucking, you know, bigots and yeah. And you, I mean, whatever. you grow up around here, and I mean, it's you know, you can, you have to have like, you grow up a certain way, and and um, you know, without you know, without much exposure. But then, like, I, I think it's more much more telling, like, what happens to you, you know, after you get out in the real world, yeah, and you know, meet some people and stuff. Like, okay, then like. What are you going to do with it? You know, like, are right. you still going to be that guy? Are you still going to think that way? You know, like, okay. Well. And, and I, and I was wondering, cause I was born in, in, um, in, um, St. Louis park. Okay. And, uh, and I only was there until I was four. And then we moved to a, to a tiny little town on a farm. And I don't think I saw another black person until, um, I moved to Brainerd and there was like two, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, but I never, um, no. That is not to say that I have never had a racist or bigoted thought, but I also didn't have like this kind of, uh, I don't know, like uh, pre preconceived, preconceived ideas, idea. Yeah. I mean, uh, like I was like, you know, I didn't, I didn't get freaked out, you know, about it, and um, and I wonder if that just had to do with exposure. I mean, like we we, we it could. You know, I because, just don't know because you grew up in a more diverse area. Yeah. Um, I, well, I didn't really grow up though; just was exposed to it at a young age, and it just wasn't a weird. It just wasn't weird to me. Maybe, maybe because your parents didn't make it weird. No, though. my mom maybe was a total bigot. Uh oh. Yeah. yeah. I mean, sometimes that happens. I mean, but, <laughs> just be real. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes that happens though. But yeah, it's a lot of crazy notions out there. Because like, even when I was playing football, 
I'd have some guys come up to me, and it's like sometimes all you can do is shake your head and laugh, but it's like, are you fucking serious? Mm. Like, I had a guy that asked me um, on the football field. He goes like, hey, man, is it true what they say about you guys? And I'm like, what do they say? Say about you guys? Yeah. Like, yeah. you can oh, dance, you, guys. you got big dicks. Yeah, that, I mean, all, all that, that stuff, shit. all that. Yeah, he goes, um, yeah, do you guys really have, like, an extra tendon that makes you faster than the rest of us? That's <laughs> like, holy shit. <laughs> I mean, I ran track, but I didn't know I had an extra tendon. I should what? go to the doctor. God, <laughs> That's awesome. Can yeah. I get a tendon put in to yeah. make me fast? Because I've always been so fucking slow. I mean, they probably mm. can nowadays. Yeah. No, but they, yeah, it's a, it's a, and that's why I say, like, when we hang out with Kyle and stuff, he sees it, and it's just like, it's so much crazy crap that you hear. And, <laughs> and, and then you know when it's coming, because the typical conversation is, I'm not racist, but... Right. Well, you can't start a conversation off like that because then we know what's following up next. It's something right. completely something ignorant and stupid. <laughs> uh, I, I'll never forget uh, um, that Cash again. Uh, he's uh, talking to that, you know, just having a conversation uh, again at the bar there one time. Uh, and this, he's talking to this lady and she's like, so what do you do? Um, and he's like, oh, he's like, I'm a teacher. Oh, yeah. And she's like, that's amazing. Yeah, she was really shocked. And he's like, "It is." And then he tell he, he he told me about it, and I'm like, "Amazing! Like being a fucking astronaut is amazing. You know, like I mean, being a teacher is a great, you know, is an awesome job. It's well, a no, no, she, noble pursuit." She probably was but just, just the shocked. Fact that, like, like, oh my god, a, yeah. a black guy can be a teacher. Yeah, she, Eureka, she, yeah, you know? she was shocked that he had a, 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 a good enough background check to be able to work in a field that wasn't um. Yeah, how do you drug dealing? How do you probably. become a teacher with all those felonies? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's that's awesome. I'm so proud of you. Yeah, that's so. Fucking like, ridiculous. did you go to night school while you were like gang banging? Uh, <laughs> I mean, was like a part, was it a part time job? No, it was like a GED like, course in jail. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, and, and that's the, another thing too is that, that everybody kind of believes that every um, black person grew up in the hood, you yeah. know, and that's not and, always true too. And, and I mean, no. a lot of people did, no. but that doesn't. But you know, that's that's my that's my favorite thing. I'm, you know, I, like like I said, I can joke about blackness because I'm black. It's, all, it's just like saying the N word, you know. I I could joke about it because it's mine. You shouldn't. <laughs> and uh, and that's what I, I feel. Know, I so so like I have. <laughs> I, I, I'm gonna. I wanna. I would like to. You know, respectfully disagree because I actually don't think that you shouldn't joke about race. But there's a huge difference between joking about race and being a racist. Yeah. Um, no. No. I mean, with certain things, like if I know you, like me and Kyle, we make jokes all the time. Right. But if I don't know you and you're making jokes about race and stuff with me. Why is that okay? Like, I don't, it's not appropriate because we don't know each other on that level. It's kind of disrespectful. Right. I totally agree yeah. with you. If that, if you're, okay, well, I, I said this on the last podcast. I don't want to repeat myself, but, you know, we're, you know, well, this is my opportunity to talk with a person <laughs> of color about it. So it would be really great if we could just, if you could just let me do this. So I, uh, I've done stand up a few times in my life, and, uh -huh. and there was this, uh, there was this bit that I used to do. Um, and uh, it, it, it involved this huge black fist dildo, and I bought it. And there was the whole joke was that I was trying to I was trying to find some fishing equipment for my for my father in law, and I, I, I typed it into to Amazon, and I like I fucked it up, and and I ended up getting this big fist, and and, it <coughs> and joke 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 joke, and then I but then I said why the fuck do I have to be um, or I said why the fuck is this thing black? Now I gotta be now I gotta be insecure about the size of my <laughs> fucking hand as well and I like threw it down on the ground and it bling 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 <clears throat> no that joke is I don't believe that joke is racist but it is it involves race sure. right yeah is that is that fair assessment? yeah that's fair okay. I mean but, but in comedy that's a different avenue too because that's that's like your profession you're gonna it's different. comedy the biggest part I think about comedy what makes it funny is like is it relatable you know, you're talking about culture, race, politics, different stuff like that. Things that people can really relate to a lot or, or the notions, the st stigmas that are out there. Right. So, it's, I mean, it's good to play on that type of stuff. Yeah. But if, if you're just like a random guy in the bar and come up to me and say, hey, man, uh, do, you, do you really have a bigger dick than me? <laughs> or should we measure See, or something? That that's, that's very awkward. So but, I mean, but these are the conversations that I really have oh, with I people bet. that won't, they just walk up to me and ask stupid stuff like all the time. And nobody in my entire life has walked up to me and asked me if I had a bigger dick than them. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't which know. seems, which seems yeah. really weird. Yeah. You know? 
because I, yes, like I have somebody's... a tiny little dick. <laughs> <laughs> like some jokes, like like I feel, and I mentioned this uh, that, that in that same conversation, like like some jokes are funny, you know, and some jokes yeah. that have a race element are funny. Some yeah. jokes like that have you know like whatever, like. <clears throat> um, but I feel like I laugh at the same jokes that like any of like like if it were a joke that had like a, a race element. Like I, th- I feel like you and I would laugh at the same joke. Yeah, you know, um, shit like that. So some of the stuff, you know, some stuff funny, some shit inappropriate, some shit hateful and fucking stupid. You know, yeah. Um, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, you know, like, people get, um, you know, pe- people get fucking carried away. And like I said, you know, like a lot of those people and shit that that say such awkward things, you know, they mean well. They're just fucking like awkward. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It could be just like very antisocial people. They don't have great social Dude. skills. Don't get out much, but then some of them know better. <laughs> yeah, man. It's just true, true. It's just some of them know better, and they. But and if they don't, they absolutely should. They should, right? Yeah. So like Kyle's experienced a lot of the stuff around me, and another thing was like the whole when I had my dreads, it was, hey man, no, I could buy some weed. <laughs> it's like, it's like, <laughs> don't. I was like, no, I don't smoke. Weird. Sorry, <laughs> what? You don't smoke? No, I don't believe that, man. You're black. You got dreads. You smoke. You don't have to lie to me. I'm not a cop. <laughs> it's like, uh, I'm not worried if you're a cop or not. I really don't smoke. I mean, I have smoked. I get really bad anxiety. I actually shared this story with your wife <laughs> last weekend. When you smoke weed? When, yeah, when I smoked didn't pass. I got really bad anxiety, and it happened to her, too. And so we had, like, a similar I, story. It was really funny. a little anxious as well. I, that's why I don't – I mean, that's one of the reasons I don't smoke no. much. Yeah, but then people really believe, okay, because you have dreads. No, you smoke. Or the, So, like, some of the other ignorant stuff was, like – um when we were talking about like the guy who came out to me i think he did say like something along the lines of like oh jamaica man it's like oh because i have dreads i just have to be jamaican <laughs> i mean i mean in his defense my family is <laughs> but and you were like <laughs> but yeah. it's just like that's a bad like come on don't like just don't but come out to me in that kind of way but <laughs> That's like assuming that uh, I like cookies, you know, because I'm fat, you know. <laughs> but at the same time, I'm like, I'm like, yeah. And I'll go think about what you said, you stupid fuck. I'm like, and leave those fucking cookies because I do love cookies. So. And that's a that's a big uh, so like Jamaican jokes about um, making jokes about um, the co- being black and stuff. So I was sitting at work. Uh, I used to teach, and now I work in like kind of a admin job. I deal with truancy and stuff. I work in Malax on the Indian reservation, yeah. tribal reservation, and um. So, like, you have staff members that, you know, they love their cookies and, and donuts and snacks, and love, like, a lot of them love chocolate. So, one of my jokes that kind of, it was funny to see the, um, the lady's reaction. Um, she goes, here, you want a piece of chocolate? And I'm like, um, no, I don't eat anything darker than me. Because <laughs> uh-huh. it was dark chocolate. And it was just like the look on her face, and she goes, and then she laughs because she realizes that I was kidding. Like, you don't have to be uptight. It's okay. <laughs> it's a joke. You can laugh. It's a joke. <laughs> it's, 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 <laughs> no, but I just thought about that when you start talking about sweets and stuff. And I just remember it was, it was, so, it was one of those moments. I, I, I like to mess with people um, at some moments, not all the time. But it's just sometimes it's, you can tell if somebody's really uncomfortable and they start bringing that up, then I'll, I'll, I might kind of make it worse <laughs> just to bother them. <laughs> But no, it's 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 so we kind of talked about we mean we've always talked about racism. I talk about it with a lot of friends and stuff, and then it's just a lot of people. Uh, like I said, it's just they don't open their minds enough to really think about um, the other issues and stuff. Even when it comes to the political standpoint, and you talk about racism, if you really think about it, every politician has screwed us over. Whether you're Republican, whether you're Democratic. You know, at some point, you didn't get everything you were promised. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, like, why do we have to hate each other because you are this or you are that or because you don't like this politician? And it, it just, I don't know. It's, it's, it. We just really need to open our minds and think about the the bigger picture. You know. So you're a huge Trump supporter, is what you're saying? Uh definitely not. <laughs> Weird. Not saying I've hated every Republican. No. I mean, some of them probably have done some great things, but you know, he definitely not supporter of him <laughs> he came in he came in the game the whole wrong way <laughs> you can't just start a whole <laughs> racially fused debate against lgbtq or everybody else and the mexicans i love hispanic people i'm from uh, miami florida you know you, you have a big hispanic culture down there yeah, and sure. they make great cuban sandwiches for breakfast <laughs> too yeah <laughs> 
No, I mean, it's They don't just, all make sandwiches. They, that's pretty racist. Oh, no, they don't. <laughs> Some of them are expected to make walls. You're right. They don't. Yeah. <laughs> They're good masons. <laughs> so we t- we've talked a little bit about, like, uh, the, you know, regular people being, you know, dumbasses. Mm-hmm. But, I mean... I can't imagine that you've lived in Minnesota this long and not experienced some actual, like, racial profiling. Oh, yeah, all the time. So, I mean, part of it, I've, I've, I have, I used to have a Impala, Chevy Impala. It was tenant windows and stuff. So, of course, that's going to be a reason why a cop might pull you over, uh, apparently, if you're black. <laughs> Do you have any idea how black you were going? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it is. <laughs> so, when I had my rims on my car, same car, same tenant windows, I had 22 inch rims on it. And um, when I had my rims on, I got pulled over literally, it was every two to three weeks for one summer. It happened every single two, like every two to three weeks. It was like, if if it wasn't within that two to three, time, two to three week time frame, it was like, hmm, I, it's coming soon. And it, it, it always happened. I always got pulled over. And so finally I decided, I was like, I'm gonna ask the next cop that pulls me over, what's going on? And he goes, um, he goes, I, all my windows are down. So all you, at this point, all you can see, it's like 70 some degrees out. It was a hot day. All my windows are down. Um, all you can see is the back window tinted. And he, he pulls me over. It's like a 30 mile per hour road. He's sitting on the side of the road. He pulls me over and I'm just like, um, what am I being stopped for? And he was like, oh, I can see you have tinted windows. I was like, really? Cause all my windows are down. And he was like, well, I couldn't even see you in there. Maybe cause you were leaning so far back while you were driving. I don't even drive with the lean. I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't drive with the lean. <laughs> and it was like, it's broad daylight. It's 30 something. I'm going 30 miles per hour and coming up to you. You can see me. And he goes, I was like, so I was like, tenant windows to me is just like such an excuse. It's just a probable cause ticket because why is my tents bothering you if it's not doing anything wrong to you? You know? And he goes, well, I just pulled a, another guy over last week and, um, uh, he for ten, for tenant windows and took him to jail and I was like you can't go to jail for tenant windows like my mom's an officer in Miami my aunt um, you know I have a lot of family members that are officers brothers in the army and aspirations to be MP one's a sergeant you know um, it's I know the law you're not gonna get over on me so it's just a probable cause ticket so I asked him I was like you know you can't go to jail for having tenant windows he goes well it turns out he was a drug dealer and had five thousand cash on him. I'm in a suit. I wear suits to work a lot. <laughs> I'm in a suit with my work ID badge on from the school. I'm not a drug dealer. This is exactly what I tell him. I was like, I'm not a drug dealer. This is my badge for work. I was like, I work at a school. Um, I just don't get it though. And he was like, well, don't be like that. And I was like, be like what? I just asked you a question. I just, cause I wanted to ask someone. I was like, the next cop stops me, I'm gonna ask. And I mean, that's just one of many like straight up racist issues I've dealt with here, like just blatantly. Um, coming up here when I first came up here was really really horrible and that's why I said it was bad when I first got here I didn't want to be here because of so much so many issues I go to Walmart and get stared at right like and then um no offense to the city of Pillager but (laughs) they were some of the most racist people I've ever seen or met if you're from Pillager out there I apologize um if you take that to heart maybe you're one of them um (laughs) but no we went to a party back in my college days and hung out um just party you know we're cool it's a bunch of football players the teams um all guys everybody from the team and um out of nowhere it's all oh, you niggers leave yeah that's how the party ended pretty much because right after that it was like an all-out brawl <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was the end of the party <laughs> Funny how that works. but it was like yeah. it was out of nowhere like and we all came with other football players that were white too um, they even noticed the tension in the air, and they're like, dude, what's going on? So then once that happened, everybody just lost their crap. Like, even the guys on the team with us, they everybody was in it. It was like the football players against Pillager, pretty much, <laughs> whoever was in there. And it was all-out brawl. So then, have you ever seen the movie Higher Learning? I have, yeah. I yeah, loved it. it was like that, almost, to some extent. So the rest of the school year, every time they felt um, or found one of us alone at the school, they would try to jump the other guy 
So it was like fights all that year, constantly. And here I am trying to be the upstanding student. I'm the president of the multicultural club and, and I just wanna get out of here and get my degree and get going as uh, one of the first people in my family to go to college and stuff like that. And, and then you gotta deal with stupid stuff like that. So it's like, I didn't wanna be here. I, I kinda lost it and I had some really great teachers. One, um, she was the, um, the many faces of Mexico. She was like a language teacher. So she traveled a lot. It was a white woman, but she, she really learned the Hispanic, um, the Spanish language and, and embraced their culture a lot, traveled a lot. And she was one of the biggest assets. Um, so I think it was, and then, so it was Miss Stumbo was another one. So it was Jeanette Ryberg, I think, and then Jane Stumbo. Um, Miss Stumbo was, I think, my uh, English teacher or so, but she started inviting me over for, um, Thanksgiving meals, me and a couple other teammates, because you know we're so far away right. that she invited us and took us in their home, and and then we had like really serious talks, and then that's when I understood. I was like, you know what? I can't let ignorant people get the best of me because these guys are gonna still go on and have good jobs and have you know good credit scores and and do great in life, and and I'm gonna run away from this school because they're being ignorant. I was like, no, I'm not gonna let them get the best of me. So I buckled down and finished up my school and then got done and just said, you know what, I'm gonna stay and I'm not leaving until I'm done. And, but it was it was very interesting. I've, like I said, it, it's been so many, it's just like blatant, ignorant, race, racial profiling, different issues that I've dealt with being up here. And um, it's just so, it's, it's crazy to me because I've experienced way more here than anywhere else. And when you think about really? the whole Minnesota nice and all that other God, stuff, yes, yeah. I, I've dealt with way more here than anywhere else. And it's, and you know, there's so many different cultures and stuff in Miami and you have like little cities of, of different cultures, like um, Hispanics, you might stay in little Havana. And you know, um, if you're Haitian, you might stay in little Haiti. You know, mm. you know they have like little sub cities, but you have a lot of different cultures and mixes down there. Um, so I guess I've never really experienced it. So to come up here, everything's so black and white. Like um, the the guys that come up to you and be like, oh no, I'm not racist. They'll say something ignorant and racist and then be like, oh no, I'm not racist. Uh, my cousin's black. Um, that only tells me that your aunt had a phase in college where she liked black men. That doesn't tell me that you're not racist. That's <laughs> so all it tells me. People so that, say that so shit all the time. Like, I'm not racist. I, I have a black friend. Yeah. And then sometimes, that's like you not said, how it works. like you said, when you came here, and it's nothing wrong with it. Like when you came here, you said it was like two black people. That's another thing. Most right. of the like everybody didn't grow up in the hood and grew up. It's it's a difference. So most of the black men that are here have probably been adopted by right. white families, and they're pretty much white. They've embraced. They, that's all they know. They don't know the other side of like what some other people have experienced or what we've been through. So there, there's definitely a difference. And then you get people that use that as a crutch as like, oh no, I have a black friend, I'm not racist. But your black friend does, doesn't experience or hasn't experienced the same stuff that we've experienced to so, some extent. So you would say that it, you've experienced more racism in Minnesota yes. than you have in the South. Yes. And I travel a lot. I've been all over. The and that is really mind blowing because like, like the South is, is yeah. supposed yeah. to be yeah. <laughs> the Jim Crow racist South. I mean, it's what it's supposed to be. And Minnesotans are supposed to be generally very liberal, you know? Yeah. I mean, we almost always like vote liberally uh, as a state, obviously. Yeah. Not everybody in the state votes liberal, but as a state. Huh. Well, then it's, it's maybe down there it was more closet racism. And you know, maybe nowadays a lot of people feel more comfortable to just say whatever that's on their mind. But um I wonder what I wonder <laughs> yeah. what could have changed, what changed in the, the last climate. few years. Some things I, I just some things. can't put my finger on it. Yeah. There's something out there. Yeah, yeah. Some things just kinda cause that. <sighs> but I mean I've I've had some people like I bartend as a second job and I remember one night I uh, went to the back to go grab a bottle of alcohol because we were out of something and then I come back and this chick she goes, um, don't serve that guy. Um, and I was like, why? And she was like, well, when you were back there, he was being very disrespectful. And I was like, disrespectful how? And she tells me, like, he's saying all this racist crap. Mind you, I've already served this guy a couple times, and he was really, he seemed like a really good guy, and it was, we were fine, we had conversation. And then when I go to the back, I guess he's throwing out all these different words and comments and things that he has to say and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, this is, that's nuts. So I didn't, I was like, well, I, I was like, unfortunately, I didn't see it personally, so I'm still going to serve him. 
you know, I'm, I'm going to treat them, you know, with respect. So I still served them. And then, like, I want to say about two drinks after that, he was, I overheard a conversation that he's having with somebody else. And then that's when I heard it. And then I told him, I was like, you know what? You can uh, pay your tab and go. And <laughs> Of course, he was like, oh, I can't get another drink. And I was like, no, I'm sorry. I was like, you're being very disrespectful. And I didn't disrespect you. You know, I, I really thought you were a decent person. But I was like, you're being disrespectful. And, and it's uncalled for. And I was like, so I'm not going to serve you anymore. I apologize. And he paid his tab and left. Luckily, you know, I don't, you don't have to, every, oh, you're a black guy. You got to get mad and get angry and solve everything with violence. No, I've never had, I've worked, I bartended like two years. I've never had an issue in my bar because you can actually teaching help me <laughs> i will say that a lot drunk people are like dealing with little kids oh yeah <laughs> and you use the same little de-escalation tactics and stuff that you learn in um in classes when you <laughs> deal with issues of a kid like biting or pushing or not sharing their toys so right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i like that i yeah. like that it's something to think about yeah sure. yeah because when you think about, like, when they're really drunk, you, you deal with it when you kick people out of the bar oh. and stuff. They're really drunk, and they don't want to be kicked out. So it's like, um, you need to sit down and relax, or I'm going to put you out of here. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, man. I apologize. I'm cool. Are you cool, bro? We're cool. <laughs> and then he wants to buy you a drink and, and all that stuff. I mean, and, you, and if I you talk to him like a kid, they actually respond to it great when they're drunk. <laughs> and I, you know, like, it's more than once I've actually, like, held a guy's hand and to walk him to walk him out of the bar you know like well like that, he that was different a, terms he wasn't putting up a fight you, you but know. i'm like i'm like okay i'm like here we go come on he's like you know and i just lead him out uh it is a lot like you know like i mean it's like babysitting yeah you know my, my my job is a lot like babysitting yeah i always liken it to that um i have my buddy mo who's a mma fighter mm -hmm. trains with tony martin whatever he just fought in the last ufc uh, but he's a humongous seven foot <laughs> uh, or six foot seven. Uh, you know, I think I heard of him. Is it uh, Mo Big Green? Mo. Yeah, Mo Green. Okay, yeah. somebody just told yeah. me about him. Uh, super awesome guy, uh, and I, I love him for multiple reasons. Um, but uh, um, one is that he like uh, um, he crochets. Um, oh, okay, cool. And his uh, his like he's like the crochet boss. That's his like his <laughs> like name, you know. Which I think is just cool. And he's always just, you know, he's just cool about it. He's like crocheting and they're like interviewing him. And he's like, I'm going to have to put down my yarn and whoop some ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which is awesome. <laughs> but I have a, I have a sob and uh, it's a long sob story that we're not going to get into, but I have a sob and I drove it down. A to sob the, story. Yeah. Well done, sir. Oh uh, yeah. There's a, I'm, I'm, there's, there's several written out. <laughs> off the, um, <coughs> but I drove it down to the gym one day and, I pulled in and I uh, I parked next to him and, and 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 he has a sob and I was like uh, oh dude I didn't know you had a sob and he goes yeah well black guys can't drive sobs and I was like <laughs> I was like what are you talking about he goes I get fucking pulled over all the time yeah yeah and he I, and he go I, he's like how often do you get pulled over I said jeez dude I, it's been years That's and he's just like Minnesota. he's like I get pulled over all the time yeah and he, and I and I said and he goes um and you know what the first thing they asked me and I'm like uh. Do you know why I pulled you over? Do you he have goes, any drugs no. in the car? They asked me whose car. Oh, damn. Are you <laughs> whose car like, are you driving? Whose car are you driving? I was like, that is such bullshit. Like, that's yeah. like that's such a fucking ridiculous question. Uh, yeah. I, like, I've never been asked whose car I was driving. Oh. You know? Well, just be in the car with the right person. <laughs> and they might we, ask you we've joked about that many many times like <laughs> like you know we, we don't go out and shit and be like okay well uh you know if we get pulled over <laughs> kyle you got this i got this absolutely <laughs> you're the spokesperson <laughs> <laughs> no you need to have that white dude with to talk to the cops yeah uh, it sometimes is needed I, I pulled over once by the cops um and this i didn't even have my rims or anything back then i got pulled over once and um I was like, what's going on? He was like, well, we're looking for someone on a warrant and you fit the description. Mind you, I was, this is when I kind of first got up here. And I'm like, really? There's another black guy in Brainerd with dreads? And I actually said this to the cop. And he goes, you know what? You're right. Um, I'm sorry to bother you. Here's your ID. Have a good day. And I'm like, are you serious? You pulled me over, probably just racial profiling me. I, and I, I wish I could remember this cop's name because it was kind of, it was really messed up to do something like that and, and then say I fit the description. And then as soon as I make that comment, Oh, yeah, you're right. Have your ID. and Because the guy had a low cut. How do I fit the description? I mean, they do make dread wigs, what, but I didn't have a cap on. What's it a low cut? 
like low cut. Or just yeah. a short hair. Not like 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 your cut. That's that's really yeah, that's not really not low. low. Really low. How low can you go? <laughs> no, but it's 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 crazy. Like I said, I've I've had several different issues and I mean we can go on and on about different stories about stuff that's happened and and it, it's it's it it builds your character a little bit more and it, it makes you more resilient, but at the same time at you get frustrated eventually and, and you feel like at some point you're gonna blow, like enough is enough. And and that's the tough part because you constantly deal with it, but you should not have to. Right. And like you said, you guys have never dealt with some of the issues, never. but it, it, but it happens a lot, and and it's just ridiculous. Like so, if we're driving down after bar close, there's more of a possibility that I might get pulled over rather than you, and it's probably because they're hoping or thinking that they're going to find something on me. Right. But you're not. Right. So now you're going to try to find something to bother me for, and right. you can't. So. And- <laughs> And you're absolutely right that, like, I've, I've never had to experience that. I, and it's almost, it's like, it's hard to relate to. Yeah. Um, yep. And, uh, like. And that's, go, that's good you can say that, too, because yeah. that's, that's one of my big things, too. You get people which you're genuine. Like, Kyle, even, we had talked, I think, before at some point, And you, it's hard to relate. You can, you can empathize. And you can say you understand, but you don't really understand I, I, I truly. Understand. And that's a big thing with a lot of people. I don't think they really truly understand. Like you can say, even if you had a mixed kid, like your woman's black, and you probably just haven't experienced her struggles or different things that she's experienced, you can understand, you can relate, you can empathize with her, but you don't truly understand because you've right. never been through it. No. Um, and it's just one of those things that I think a lot of people and with the biases and stuff, you really have to understand yourself to really see that. And that's good that you can admit, like, you know, yeah. you, you can, you can't relate. And a lot I of people can. swear they can relate. Sure. It's like, Oh no, I understand. I, I really do. And I get you. And I, I really, that's cool. That's, yeah. There was that. But that doesn't, one, but that doesn't mean, but I, yeah, I yeah you just I can't, it's, it's different understanding. <laughs> it's no way to like make you black. So you can really feel the experience. Oh and then, yeah. Like I could just like do the black face thing. Yeah. That'd be then. frowned upon. <laughs> <laughs> Tropic thunder. What right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what do you mean, you people? <laughs> yeah. It's a fucking good no. So it's 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 really one of those things that like you even um, so my daughter's mom um, she's she's always with me when I was in the car back in the day and stuff getting pulled over and it's the same thing. She gets frustrated and she understands from her standpoint, but she doesn't understand from a whole different perspective because she's not the actual driver. She doesn't understand the tension. And it, it's tough because cops, like I have a lot of cops in my family, so I don't look at cops as a bad light, but it sucks that when uh, when you see the lights, you, even being a white person, your heart starts racing and right. you're we frantic. Talk we talk about it all the time. Before, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's like, crazy. Oh, shit, it, you you know? should feel comfortable around them right. and feel protected, but it's like every time it's like, oh shit, what did I do wrong? And it, they might not be coming for you. <laughs> another oh another tenant window story i got pulled over one day so it was a guy riding my tail on 169 really close and i just driving at the speed limit and then i can see a state trooper ahead well the guy randomly who can't see the state trooper in the truck floors it flies around me to get around me because he's pissed that i wasn't driving fast enough not knowing there was a cop out there the cop pulls out and i'm like in my head laughing like oh crap this guy, he's gonna go get this guy this is what you get for riding my ass nope the cop pulled me over motherfucker yeah so I asked him, I was like, oh, why am I being pulled over? So I thought maybe he clocked me on accident for this guy. And um, he was like, oh, I pulled you over for your tenant windows. I was like, so not the guy that just was flying around me and did way over the speed limit? Because I always go five to six over. So if I'm doing five to six, o- six over and he flew past me, he's doing well over the speed limit. But you pull me over because you see the tenant windows and you probably feel like you can find more on me. Um, that was my first tenant window ticket. <laughs> Literally, that was my first tenant window ticket. Yeah. So I mean, it's 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 a lot of different. I don't know. I don't know if that's they're being trained that way or just the different biases or different. Well, and not trained. I mean, we talk. We talk. I, I don't know why it seems like it's such a reoccurring theme on this show, but almost every show we've talked about like um, the policing, know, the and poli- policing, and. Uh, and I and I think that there's definitely a, a huge lack of training, just mm-hmm. be, uh, kind of across the board, uh, in that. But it's also like like you were saying, uh, when you get pulled over, or when anybody gets pulled over, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And I, I mean, if, if if I see those cherries, and I'm like, fuck. Even though I know that I don't have any 
drug yep. paraphernalia yep. in the car. I, I, I'm completely sober. I have insurance. And, like, like the worst thing that's going to happen is I'm going to get a, a ticket for, for whatever, whatever, whatever it might have been. Yep, whatever yep. it might have been. And, and even though those that our situations are identical, you, uh, you know, don't have any drugs in the mm-hmm. car, yeah. Um, my my fear is like fuck. I'm gonna get a ticket, and and your fear has to potentially be like I might get shot. Yeah, it's it's. I've never had a. I mean, I've I've had cops approach me with. They can you can tell that they were a little tense, but I've I've never had an issue where I was truly afraid. But nowadays happens. it is it is scarier nowadays though because it's like you don't know. I, I seen this guy. He was working security. Um, and this was the ideal like he goes he's probably like 20 something just started a security gig and he's like so if people get rowdy can i um can i can i take them down because i got some experience fighting and stuff and i and i said to somebody i'm like you know what that guy right there is the ideal person that i feel like some cops come into the game and they're like gun ho and they just want to come in they have a chip on their shoulder or they just haven't experienced or had enough people with, from different cultures around them. So your first thing is you want to take people down. And, and that mindset, it was funny to find out that he is actually in school to be a cop. Right. <laughs> um, he was working security, but he's in school to be a cop. And it's, that's scary. It is. Because you have people that already like just ready for violence. There's other ways to handle things. You can take, like I said, I've had two years at a bar, plenty of drunk people, plenty of ignorant people making comments, and I've never had an issue but you have a guy the first day on work worried about taking somebody down right away. Right. Trying to feel like the big man. And it's, and it's, it is scary because you don't know what's going to happen. Like, like I said, I have insurance. I have everything. I, you know, I'm, I don't have any issues. And the worst I probably would get is a ticket. I don't have tenant windows now, but so I can't get that. So they'd have to find something else. But I don't know. Um, you know, you, I have been asked if I had weapons of mass destruction in my car. And I'm like, no, I don't have a uh, weapons of mass destruction. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. Like uh, I don't know. I don't know what that would classify as because he's <laughs> actually actually. So I was out um shooting clay pigeons that day, and um yes, black guy shoots clay pigeons. <laughs> hey, I was out there shooting clay pigeons um, and the cop happens to pull me over with a handgun and like this. No, <laughs> <laughs> it was a twelve gauge. <laughs> you, you ganked clay pigeons? That's crazy. <laughs> so he goes, uh, he pulls me over, and he was like, "I pulled you over for speeding." And I was like, "Sir, that was a stop sign. Are you saying I blew past the stop sign?" He was like, "No, you made a complete stop at the stop sign." So how was I speeding? And he was like, well, do you have your license and stuff on you? I was like, yes. And he was like, do you have any weapons of mass destruction or anything in here? And I was like, no. And then later on, he comes and is like, oh, I'm going to have to ask you to get out the vehicle and search the vehicle. I don't, he had no real reason to search the vehicle. Um, so he searches the vehicle and he sees my shotgun back there. It's in a case and everything. It's in the trunk and all that stuff. And um, he was like, I asked you if you had any weapons on you. I was like, no, you asked me if I had weapons of mass destruction. I was like, that's a shotgun that I own, and it's registered under my name. There should nothing be wrong with that. Uh, it, it is legally mine. It is being carried legally how it's supposed to be. Um, yeah. So it's, I don't know. I think sometimes they kind of get over and try to feel like some, some it's not, I'm not saying all cops are like all cops aren't bad there's good people that's just like any culture like we talk about uh, there's good people and there's bad people there's good cops and there's bad cops and it's just it's a difference of if you're going to try to become a better one or try to learn anything um one of the best things that i would suggest i don't know i can't make you know i can make suggestions maybe next time they come knocking on my door getting for votes for sheriffs but um (laughs) one of the best things that i can suggest was um I, I had this mental health training. It was really powerful, and it talked about like cultural biases and stuff. And they really went into depth about um, different biases for people. And a lot of people, um, a lot of white people, walked out of the conference because they felt so uncomfortable from the conversation and discussion that was going on. And I think things like that need to be discussed, even within. Um, certain job fields maybe all job fields just to to get rid of those biases or understand your own biases because you can't you can't truly work on them if you want to work on them are you or sometimes you don't really know because you've never really nobody's confronted you nobody's addressed it maybe some of your friends are exactly the same right the whole idea of being colorblind and like like 
it's like but everybody's got, got their biases. shit you yeah. know like it's, yep. it, but it's up to you like what are you gonna do with that you know like like we all should be working on our shit like unless you think you're fucking perfect you know like we all need to work on our shit yeah and also not even if you even if you like are not prejudiced against a group of people mm-hmm. right you still don't understand their experience Absolutely. And yeah. so if you don't understand somebody's experience, you can't know where they're coming from. Yeah. It, we talk about, about it with, um, well, we have a little bit about, um, be, about women, you know, and how uh, I, we brought up the whole, like, dick pic thing on our first episode. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I've been doing this very in-depth survey of women and how many dick pics they get. And it's fucking ridiculous. People send their dick pics all the time. I, I have female friends and I hear the stories all the time. Do, yeah, it's it, crazy. And I'm like, and I'm just like, I'm not brave enough. Nope. Couldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like if, if I'm, if I'm a, out there and I'm a completely single guy, I cannot send a chick. A I dick just pic. It's like, just like, what does that do for you? What the fuck? I think it, it, I think it's like shooting their shot way like to the extreme because it's like you're hoping that she's going to be like, oh, wow, this majestic dick. I need to have it. <laughs> oh. But it's like when you when you understand the reality of it, women are probably getting inbox all day long from different guys, especially <laughs> when you're, you know, you're posting pictures all the time as a woman. If you look cute and you're trying to make a social media presence, you're getting people in your DM all the time. So. I don't know if you're out there sending out dick pics. Yours isn't better than the next person, so you probably should stop. <laughs> I feel it's personally attacked. <laughs> well, Kyle. <laughs> well, but it, as Kyle said in the, in the first episode, I mean, he doesn't. Mm. He he is he is sent out a you dick quit. pic or two in his you life. You quit. Well, well, did you do better. it next to the Febreze can to try to like measure up and stuff? Well, what I do <laughs> is like. I have a lot of costumes and shit, you know, like, so I'll dress my dick up as like historical figures or, you know, like, you know, like, like we got like, like action figures, shit like that, you know, got, you this know, is a very like weird, weird fetish. Joe. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, you, you know, can get paid for that. <laughs> I feel like you should. That's not yeah. a bad idea. Maybe this podcast can become something mm-hmm. more mm-hmm. X rated. Yeah. Oh, no. yeah, sure. You, that there's will. a market for that. Oh, yeah. yeah Everybody sure. loves Marvel. There's a market for everything. <laughs> <laughs> Talk into your fucking microphone, Kyle. Oh, Can't sorry. You? Every, everyone turn loves it, Marvel. Turn it more toward you. Turn it like. My fingers don't <laughs> turn that way. Breaking. Don't break it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, there you better, go. Better, yeah, better. Perfect. Closer. Um, warmer. But yeah, so even in, in like. I know a lot of women, mm-hmm. right? And I have a lot of, you know, I'm, I've been married a couple of times and no good at that, but I've been. So, but I still can't, like, understand how it feels to, like, get, dick get pics fucking dick pics all the time or, um, or actually have to be afraid uh, to, to walk home, you know? Yeah. It's, yeah. it's you know, I, I'm going to get walking home from the bar. Like, I... I like that sometimes they're like legitimately like I'm afraid to walk home. But what's crazy is people can understand people can like um, you can look at the women, for example, who, you know, they're not a culture. They're just right. you know, a gender. You can look at women and say, you know, that's crazy that she she has to be scared to walk home at night or certain things that she has to endure or go through. But then some of those same people that can really empathize and look at that won't empathize and look at like culturally that black guy like this you could be the same right. guy to be like oh no i can't let her walk down the street alone but then you can walk past a black guy being harassed by somebody and not say anything hmm that's very interesting yeah, yeah i think yeah. you're right and it, it, i so i think was i think maybe why that is mm-hmm. is and is because there's so much more exposure to women because, you know, half of our half of our you know species is women. Yeah. And so like, and I'm you know, and I still think a lot of guys are are, are sexist assholes. This is true. But <laughs> I don't have that much experience with people of color. I just simply don't. Yeah. Um. Uh, so do you think that 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 that's part of why is that, just is that just, is, the, is just that's the, the biggest reason why, and that's what it comes down to. Like I said earlier, it's like you you're only afraid of what you don't know. Right. So it's just like being pulled over by the cops. You don't know what's going to happen. Right. So you have that fear in you of like, damn, what did I do wrong? What's going to happen? And you're all nervous. But you don't, but if you knew, let's say 
the cop was Kyle pulling you over, you'd be more comfortable because you know Kyle and you know that you're not going to expect to like get shot or nothing crazy. You might I mean, get a ticket still. Motherfucker, but <laughs> Unless you owe money. <laughs> no, but I mean, I, I think that's car? what it comes down to is like you really have to, you have to be able to see it in different ways. A lot of people just, they, oh, I'm not racist and that's just it. And, but you might have biases. Like, you know, you have different things that we talked about, you know, different notions of people who believe that, oh, this is this way. Or you have a Muslim person sitting next to you on a plane and they're a terrorist. And it's like not every Muslim is a terrorist. Right. You know, right. it's it's the same concepts of different cultures, different races and everything. And, and and you just have to really be able to open your mind and be open, more open minded. Some people just need more education on the stuff. Like maybe we need community meetings in Brainerd, Minnesota that actually talks about huh. cultural biases and okay, big stuff like that this leads into that actually because um kyle put a post on facebook a while ago mm -hmm. about um trying to understand oh his yeah feelings about was, the somali population mm, yeah um and the whole thing was like i um i, I keep uh you know I, like i'm always you know i'm fucking compulsive like you know, with friendliness and shit. Yep. And I'm always trying to, you know, like I fucking like my big, in, like the most, the thing that in life that I'm like the most enthusiastic about is people, you know, mm -hmm. I fucking love meeting people. I like making friends. Um, and, uh, um, you know, like I, so I, I go to St. Cloud a lot. Um, they have a, you know, a, a pretty big, uh, like Somali yep, um, yep. population. Um, and I was just trying to understand like, um, why like my like friendly, you know, overtures and stuff, um, were not being welcomed, um, you know, by by like men and women, um, uh, you know, uh, you know, from from this culture. I'm like, you know, so I was like, is it a cultural thing? You know, like, I mean, like, how, you know, for one, I shouldn't be so bothered by it. You know, um, what have you tried but, to talk to somebody and they just kind of brushed you off? Or yeah, what? you know, like, mm -hmm. and I mean, I, even you know, just even the little. Uh, just gestures of courtesy, courtesy and stuff like mm -hmm. that, you know, like every, you know, at every turn, I felt like I was getting snubbed, you know, and I thought, I'm like, are, is there something about their culture that makes them unfriendly? Um, you know, like what, uh, you know, because I... And you asked that on Facebook, yeah. and you got some really good stuff and some yeah. real, like, backlash I mean, because I want to understand, you know, and, yeah. and uh, I mean, what I resolved to do in the end was just power through it, you know, and just not change what I fucking do, you know, just keep mm -hmm. being friendly. And honestly, like, I'm glad we got, we brought this up because uh, I know a lot of people read that, um, but I like the last couple of uh, la like like last couple of times I've like got a, had a chance to like interact with uh, you know in, in, in small ways just in passing basically, uh, but uh, you know positive experiences smiles and short little conversations and you know like you know because I just kept on plugging away you know yeah. and I'm like why can I not make friends with these people you know but uh, um, and it's it's <laughs> that's going better for me uh, but yeah like I wanted to understand you know and I put that shit out there because. I wasn't, you know, like, I was like, well, I hope nobody thinks that this is a fucking weird thing to say. And I think some people did think it was weird, but I wanted to get that shit. I wanted to work on it. You know, like I wanted to understand. Yeah. And, uh, and you were talking about having like community meetings and uh, a few years ago, um, I'm a big NPR listener. I always listen to NPR okay. when I'm in the car or whatever. And I uh, uh, was like listening to This American Life it was on and t they were talk. they were in St. Cloud, Minnesota at a fucking town meeting and uh, because everybody was all up in arms about the, the Somali, Somali population, population yeah. and some of the like ridiculously um, venomous you know shit that some of my fellow white Minnesotans were saying were was was like I was like I'm I'm fucking ashamed um why did I want to put that out there? Oh, yeah, because I think because Brainerd needs I think to do that. that I think yeah. those community meetings in Brainerd would probably yeah. be, uh, yeah, they'd probably uh, be on uh, on uh, This American Life because there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, pillagers. But you have a lot of people that don't want to face the reality or face the music of what could come at them because it might be right. someone sitting on that community uh, on the chair or in one of those board seats that feel like you know, well, damn, that's I'm not that way or I'm not entertaining this or I'm well, not listening I think, to this. I think for sure. Nothing's changing unless we talk about it. Yeah, and we need to. It needs to be discussed. And I, I, you know, maybe we need to mix things up again. Maybe it needs to be a black person on the board in the city council, if that's possible. You know, I don't know if they're allowing, you know, other people to really get 
um, put on those platforms. But I think it, it, it's big because there's different things um, that goes into that, you know. Now, we, you know, when we talk about race and stuff, we, you know, like we, we focus, you know, like, like most of those conversations, at least most of the ones that, I'm, that I participate in, it usually winds up being like black and white. We're going to talk about white people and black people. Um, I don't know, that's why I brought up all type of racist. That's because it's, it's, yeah. it's not just black and white. Um, but what, uh, like, what are, are there, what kind of race issues have you run into um, Working on, on, on the, the reservation? reservation? I was going to oh, ask no, yeah, yeah. Well, I was yeah. gonna, I was actually going to speak on that, too, um, earlier. So I, I hate it with a passion. Um, but when I tell people I work out there, they're like, Oh, you work in the reservation? Oh, it got to be rough out there. And it's like, why do you just have that notion that it's so bad out there? It's no different than Northeast Brainerd, Minnesota, you know? <laughs> we all know what goes on in Northeast Brainerd. But, I mean, you know, it's, it's just the only difference is it's a smaller area. So it just seems more publicized or more of an a issue because it's more of a, a smaller area because you have the little – um, reservation or you have Brainerd area now yeah they, uh, there might be um, some struggles with opioids and stuff on the reservation which is a big issue and a lot of community members out there are actually working on trying to fix those issues and, and work on trying to um, better the community um, but we have those same issues here in town yeah nobody so, t- so nobody it, does opioids but, in Brainerd but no but they'll look at it they'll look at it as um, oh it's so bad out there honestly I relate out there so much and I love my job out there because working out there is almost very similar to growing up in the hood in Miami. You know, you, you have the, a lot of those kids have been through some of the same stuff that I've experienced in my life. And it, it really makes me want to uh, really see them succeed. And, and, I, and I love the few success stories, you know, that I've watched the kids, some of the kids grow. I've coached sports out there. I've been out there for years. Um, and it's just to be able to work with them and let them know that you don't have to be what people think you have to be. You don't have to be what um, society might see you as or you think society sees you as. You can do something different. And, I mean, I'm an example of that. I've been through a lot. I've watched a lot of stuff. I mean, my uncle, it, statute of limitation passed up or whatever, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> my, I actually was taken on a drive-by shooting at, like, the age of six seven or something with an uncle of mine Jesus. yeah it's like so i mean you you know you you grow up with different things i've grew up I've, I've watched a lot i've seen death a lot like firsthand in front of me different things like that and um you know it it's different when you actually experience things like that so you know and a lot of these kids see some of the similar things you know they might it might not be in the same manner that i've seen it but it might be like some a family member overdosing and stuff and there's still people at the same time you know you still have the kids you still have grandmas you still have grandpas uncles aunties so there's no difference but you do get a lot of ignorant comments that people make when i tell them i work out there and then i have to confront them so now it's like another conversation like i can't defend them why can't i why because i'm not native no no i still can defend them it's, it's still right is right and wrong is wrong if you're ignorant and this person is a generally good person and talking to me and being very fine and suitable I'm going to defend that person. Actually, <laughs> stopped the fight. And uh, I was out in Zarbas one night, and um, it was this guy that I played football with. I didn't remember him, but he remembered me, which wasn't that hard because, you know, black guy with dreads <laughs> and stuff. Like you said, at Kyle's wedding, he was like, I think I remember you. And I was like, yeah, I was the only black guy there, so it shouldn't be hard. <laughs> but I was fucking hammered. So, like, no, no. But, um, yeah. So and the, I'm colorblind. You just, just right is right and wrong is wrong. So he's like, you gotta, you just have to defend the the issues and stuff. You know, and uh, you remember uh, like all those. Uh, there, there was a bunch of Native brothers uh, uh, up in Walker. Um, you know, when uh, I used to work at that bar up there, uh, and like I don't know if you met, I don't know if I, I, you made it up there a couple times. Yeah. I don't know if you yep. met any of those cats, but man, like I was like I'd go like I could go on like go party with those guys after work and shit and like. Man, you know, so welcoming and like, I like, and people have the people have a weird idea about you know about the res. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, like, and these guys, like, because I mean, me and Rich are at an after bar, and uh, and, and uh, my buddy Rich uh, is uh, um, an island, like, you know, half white and half Islander. Um, he's Micronesian, and uh, and you know, we go to this party, and uh, you know, we're after bar with these guys, and. And, you know, I'm kicked back. I'm relaxed. I'm talking to this girl, you know, like we're partying it up. And Rich is like, man, he's like, that's awesome, dude. He's like, he's like, I took an, he took an, he had taken another friend uh, of ours, another one of our coworkers out there the weekend before. And he's like, 
he's like, man, he's like, you're so relaxed. He was so like petrified. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And he's like, well, you know, you're the only white dude here. And I'm like, <laughs> I look around and I'm like, oh, shit. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I guess I am. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, he's like, he was not comfortable. And I'm like, these people, you know, these guys are fucking, these guys are amazing, you know, like, and like, you know, and that was like, you know, that was a bunch of like dudes, like, like, uh, like young dudes. I mean, these are exactly the people that motherfuckers are afraid of. Yep. I'm the only, I'm the only white guy there, yeah. you know, and I'm like perfectly comfortable, you know, they're fucking super friendly, super, uh, super welcoming, all that shit. And I'm like, shit, you know, that sounds like all my stories, but in reverse. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a buddy, um, we've been friends for years. We played baseball and stuff in college together and everything. And, uh, I've, I've gone out with him so many times. I mean, to like, uh, country bars i hate country music no offense to country singers or anybody that loves it but i just hate it i just i didn't grow up around it i grew up off like blues and like such a stereotype of but but i don't white rednecks no like i I just don't like country music it's not for me so then um i have a a a friend that i go out with him all the time we go to country bars we do everything majority of the time i'm the only black person and there's always some crap where somebody's starting a fight or something's going on and then um you it happened in reverse. I invited him out for my birthday one day, <laughs> one year, and um, we went out to a club in the cities to get bottle service and all that, hanging out in the VIP section, and he's the only white guy in the club. And he felt uncomfortable, and after that he told me, I will never go out with you at a club like that again. And I'm like, are you kidding me? I've been out with you, I can't even count how many times where I'm like almost the only white, I mean only black person, and, and there's been issues every time that you start apologizing for other people's actions, which you shouldn't have to because you didn't do it. But then, hey, no, <laughs> I think someone Sorry. wants a drink. <laughs> she definitely wanted a drink. We forgot to lock the door. <laughs> no, but then, um, like I said, it was in reverse where he was uncomfortable. He felt out of place. And I was like, you know, the difference is not one person bothered you. I was like, not one person bothered you that night. You hung out with us. You were fine. We had fun. We had drinks. It was a good time. But on the other hand, every time I go out with you, it's always something where somebody has something stupid to say, and it's an issue, and you're apologizing for their behaviors and stuff. But now you're uncomfortable because you went out with me one time. And it's, 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 that's how some people are wired. I mean, I'm still really good friends with him, but it, it really upset me for, to hear him say something like that when... We've been friends for years and I've always been there for him for a lot of issues. He'd call me even when he was like down in college, far away, having issues with people and was like needed somebody to talk to or wanted someone to like um, work through his issues with him or something like that. <laughs> so, I mean, it's, it's, it's one of those things where I, I, like I said, I was, it was just pure disappointment. Did you, did you hear? I missed it? the story. No, I had a piss. Sorry. Uh, oh. I can rewind it. <laughs> <laughs> so the gist of it is it was like Kyle's story. Um, I had right, a, except the opposite. Uh, the opposite. You know, I, I have a buddy that I always hung out with, and it was always like racially infused issues when I go out with him because I'm always the only black person. Yeah, going in to the little small bars. towns or wherever we go, and he went out with me once and felt uncomfortable. But he had no, he never had. He went with, with you. He went out with me once to a club down in Minneapolis. Oh, I mean, granted, I. I, it was downtown Minneapolis, which <laughs> they they have some issues down there um, every now and then, but it's not horrible. But he was fine. He never had any issues. He drank, had a good time, had fun. But he said he was so uncomfortable because he was the only white guy. And I'm like, imagine how I feel all the time. Hmm. And But only difference is you had no issues. Nobody bothered you. It was a good time. We had fun. But he said he would never go. And he hasn't to this day. He still has a Interesting. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, that's stuff to think about. And that makes me think... Um, you know, like my like my experiences. It's not like I've never had any like negative experiences. You know, with, with race and shit like that. Like you know, um, but for the most, you, know, you know, you just can't let that shit fuck with you. Um, you know, like right. I've been I've gotten jumped. You but know, you know, like yeah. being the only, I fucking you know, I, like, I, f- I fucking I fucking hate assholes. Yep, man. And see, any that's stripe, the thing. Any, you any know? fucking way because it's size, like if you you're know, like you know. I, I, got, I, 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 I knew this black guy was an asshole. Yeah, I knew this white guy was an asshole, too. Right. Because um, guess what? <laughs> Fucking asshole is actually colorblind. Yeah. Right? <laughs> asshole don't see race. <laughs> that made me think of a chick that I met. Uh, some girl walked up to me in the club one night, and, and uh, she asked about, like, uh, 
um, my life and like kids and stuff. And I was like, yeah, I have a kid. And she was like, you only have one kid? And I'm like, what? <laughs> it's like, and she was dead serious. She was dead serious. It's like, actually, I think the conversation started off with, yeah, like how many kids do you have? I know you got a couple kids or something like that. And then I'm like, I only have one kid. She's like, you only have one kid? And I was like, yeah. And she's like, that you know of. And I was like, no, I only have one kid. <laughs> Like, I tell a lot of people that I know and a lot of friends, like, I've, like I'm the type of person that always uses a condom. Like, it's just, I don't know what it is about, I don't know if it's Minnesota or what, but I hear a lot of women say, I'm on birth control. Okay, birth control does not stop STDs. Well, so it, it, so yeah. therefore, I don't care how much birth control you're on, I'm going to use a condom regardless because I don't know who you've been with. And that's my mentality. But well, you, you don't want to mess up your... <laughs> Dick pics, no, with some definitely. weird blemish yeah. or growth, you know. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it just doesn't become presentable. <laughs> then you, you, I don't think they have oh, eczema shit. for dicks. Look at this thing. Also, <laughs> the other you can't issue, go in public like this. <laughs> the other issue <laughs> clear about, cell and about the whole proactive. birth control thing is that like uh, you don't control her birth control. Yeah, exactly. Like, I that don't. Too. I don't put that pill in yeah. her mouth every yeah. day. So unless um, it's a day after smoothie. <laughs> <laughs> Plan B smoothies, baby. <laughs> now, that's you've a good, done it before. No, that's a, oh. just a damn good business idea. Yeah, it is. We could do like a like a burn kind of style, yeah. like a smoothie you know, shop, like a little smoothie. And we shop, can even make them healthy and get some kale and all that stuff for yeah. all the fit people out there. Yeah. Are you four eighty six? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> one thing I did want to ask you about working out on the res. Uh, it, it, do you? Do you feel like there's um, a different level of, um, you know, uh, racism coming from the native culture? Or um, do you feel like some people, it's, it's, it just depends who the person is um, with, you know, you have some um, people that look at like, you know, history. The white man has not been great to a lot of people. And that's just history. Right. But so, you know, you have some that look at it still that way. And I understand it, too, because I, I've dealt with ignorant people also. But the one thing that I tell a lot of the students and a lot of the people that I talk to is like, you know what? Yeah, it's messed up. Yeah, you've dealt with some crap. You know, we've had slavery, too. It's the same. It's the same concept, you know, different cultures. But you can be one of those people to sit on your ass and keep making excuses about what's going on and what happened in the past. Or you can be somebody that does something about your life and make a future for you, your family and your kids. Um, or the kids that feel like they have to make excuses. It's a different conversation, but it's along the same lines. And you, it's just what it comes down to, because a lot of people feel like, oh, you, black, you, you live off welfare. We're paying for your stuff, and you, you know, our tax dollars are paying for blah, blah, blah. But it's like, no, you can either be one of those people that do sit around and collect a bunch of government assistance and make excuses about, oh, the white man don't want to give me no good job. You know, I've been snubbed a lot in jobs and different things, and, and uh, you know, I still I still fight. I still keep working and making the future for myself and making a life for myself. Playing college football, you know, was one of the first experiences where I felt like I got snubbed. You know, I did really good for myself on the football team. I was a good athlete. You know, um, I made the paper pretty frequently. And when even playing semi-pro ball, I made the paper, news articles, and I was doing really good. But I was the only person that wasn't nominated on my defensive team for like an All-American or first team or second team or honorable mention or nothing. Even though I, I think that year I actually led our team in tackles from the safety position. If I wasn't, I think I was like the second person on the team. And it's just like, you know, I've been snubbed. It, it happens. At my job on the reservation, I have a principal. Well, he's not there anymore, but he was a principal. And, um, you know, I feel like, you know, you get the – they they value you but they don't want to tell you or really give you that power so i i feel like i got i always got shafted like i'm always being assigned other people's duties i do my job i do everybody else's job that you hand to me and i'm always doing stuff and you're still delegating and micromanaging me and pushing things on me even though i've never had an issue never had a complaint and never been written up and my stuff is always done and documented but you still feel like you have to throw extra stuff on me and come at me crazy and it's like that's their job why don't you ask them and and it was a lot it was some arguments that we had to get into and, and this is stuff that happened out there on the reservation as well oh we have some more drinkers hey coming in we're <laughs> 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 
Uh, you once again, no one locked the door. <laughs> Rob's gonna be like, um, fuck this. We're open on Sundays. <laughs> yeah, you might as well. That's uh, you got a couple of business. I mean, well, shit, we could just do the bar and the podcast at the same time. Yeah, that was uh, that was uh, Tony Powers that just uh, almost uh, tried to come in yeah. and, uh, oh, and and join really? our yeah. our podcast. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Very Jason's talented. Jason's not as famous brother. Last <laughs> last week we talked uh, we talked a great deal about Jason Powers. Uh, uh, do you know Jason? No, I don't. Uh, he's a great guy, but uh, he's a cook uh, um, that works with PJ, our guest last week, and okay. and that was just his brother. So, yeah. shout out shout out to the Powers boys. Guys. <laughs> yeah, but I, I mean, like, so on the reservation, it's it's I mean, it's just like anywhere else. You have some people that have the reservations uh, of about the culture and uh and Brainerd and stuff and then you have people that just don't care you know mm. but you have that in every culture you have people that are going to make excuses and blame other people but it's because you don't know how to get up and do for yourself or don't want to too lazy um I've only I've actually had a issue with one parent out there ever um I have a funny That's story remarkable at any school I do have a funny story <laughs> about one lady She's a really cool lady. She's a great lady. But um, I was teaching a class and she came to pick up her grandchild and she peeks in the room and she goes, oh, I was sweeping. And she goes, oh, you have a black teacher. And it's just like, I look up and I'm like, Whoa. she goes. And then the next thing she follows up, where'd they find you at? <laughs> and I'm like, it's just like, um, last time I checked, I think I came out of my mom's womb. <laughs> Um, before that, I don't know if my ancestors came off a boat directly or what, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, I actually just applied. Um, no, but it was just crazy that, it, so that was interesting. It was just one little funny story about somebody, it's a comment that was made, but, um, usually it's pretty acceptable. It's uh, like I said, we're, we have a lot of similarities as far as like the reservation in, in black cultures and probably like Hispanic culture is the same. Um, I think it's a lot of big similarities there, but I had like one parent that was mad at me ever and blamed the color of my skin and I just think it, he, he fought with his own demons um, he's struggling with his own issues and he needed someone to blame for his kid not doing his part because right now I deal with the truancy so <laughs> attendance matters if your kid's not showing up to school I'm contacting you figuring out why and if in if I can't make contact and if you're not cooperating then eventually at some point I have to call the tribal PD and we have to open a truancy case on you uh, this is one parent in, individually always it's always some comment about me he the first meeting we had was like my kid was never truant until you made him truant he was like why don't you go work at one of those schools in the cities don't they got some black schools down there and i'm just like you know um that it's just ignorance because i'm like you know the the attendance policy is this way in the state of minnesota period doesn't matter what school your kid goes to you know, and um, I was like, and actually, I don't think you understand my job because I don't do the attendance. Your kid's teacher does the attendance. I just monitor and track it to make sure that they're doing their part and showing up. Or when you're when he's not coming in, you're bringing in doctor's notes and stuff. And this has been a long going thing with this parent because we've had court and he'd like go rambling off in court telling the judge when the judge is like, you have anything to add? And he was like, yeah. I'd, I'd like to uh, request that this black motherfucker doesn't come to any more court hearings. And, and it's like, it's just, just, it's just yeah, it, you know, he's sitting up there deflecting his crap on me. That's what See, it comes down to. I wouldn't be to. here, but the green motherfucker was sick today. <laughs> yeah. Um. Like another day he comes in the court, he comes down into the court area and um, starts walking up and he goes, oh, you're here again? You're still here? And I was like, yeah. And he was like, why don't you go work at a school in Africa? Don't they got some schools in Africa for you? And, and then this is another thing. <laughs> That's why I think they kind of did away with the whole African-American thing, because not everybody is African. Right. You know, you might be from another island or another descent of something. So it's like, you know, and I told him that. I was like, he's like, uh, Oh, why don't you go find a school in Africa? And I was like, why would I want to work in Africa? And he was like, well, because that's where you're from. And I was like, actually, I'm not. But and I walked away from him. And it's just like diffusing the situations. It, like I said, once again, not really entertaining and getting involved in it. But that was the one parent out of my since I've been out there. I've been out there probably for like about eight years, besides a little stint I took when I had my NFL combine and took some time off and stuff. But I've been. Actually, it's probably been long, like nine years because I think I started out there in 2010. Yeah. yeah. So it's been some time. That's amazing. Yeah, but it's crazy. 
<laughs> it's amazing <laughs> that you've been you out there. Though. You held a job down there. You held a job that long? Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it took him a while to catch it. <laughs> yeah, I was like, it took him a while. Doesn't seem all that amazing. <laughs> uh, some people at home are probably gonna rewind and be like, wait, did I miss something? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. It's amazing. It's I'm so proud of you yeah, that you were down. able to. Yeah, I got. You're it. so yes. articulate. Thank you. I appreciate you. <laughs> actually, that's yeah. true, and that was one thing. It, it that did I take was a while to get this way, honestly. <laughs> well, <laughs> when, you, when you come from Florida, you come up here, and it's like we have a certain way of talking and, and saying things and things that. So, it, it's re- you, I had to adjust. You had to get used to like the culture. It's almost like your um, your phone voice. Yeah, you have your, cause you know, you know what I mean. Like you yeah. have your professional voice, but you have a different way that you talk when you're with other friends. Yeah, not saying like it, 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 and mine's not like that. But I just had to develop a different sense because I felt like you know a lot of people, you had stipulations. I had dreads and I had gold teeth also. So you have dreads and gold teeth. Oh, you're this thug, and you have tattoos too, and all this other stuff, and. And it's like, no, I'm actually educated and I've done a lot. I've always, I've worked with kids. Even when I was in high school, I did a lot of mentoring through the YMCA. My uncle's um, down in Florida has a uh, youth mentorship uh, program called FCA, which is like, um, I think it's Family Christian Association or something like that. And I was a mentor for that program and we traveled and did a lot of um, stuff with the kids and mentoring trips, taking them to Atlanta from Miami. So I've always worked with kids and done like, you know, legit things that that would set me up to be more professional and have a better uh, sense of like life and how you should be. But then people see you and it's like, I had someone tell me, I was scared to talk to you. And I'm like, why? It was like, because you just, you, you just don't look very approachable. And I'm like, well, it's not like you're going to say hi. I'm going to be like, get the fuck away from me. <laughs> like, you know, like, I mean, no. maybe you never know. <laughs> no, I, I probably wouldn't. No, you, no. Well, you, you're right. But they wouldn't know that you wouldn't. Yeah. yeah. And like, it's like you. But I think it just became because of being black. Yeah, and it's like, oh, I was just, I was scared to approach you. And right. It's like, Speaking of, of, uh, of uh, you know, like, like the way you talk. Um, so my friend, uh, your departed friend Brandon um, he was also from Miami mm-hmm. and uh, um, and he, he died a few years ago it was tragic great guy wonderful dude uh, he was a um, he was a basketball player here at CLC mm-hmm. and uh, I remember uh, like he, like I could not understand half of what he fucking said. He, I, I, I'm like, what the fuck? What is this gibberish? Like I can't fucking under, you know. But yeah. I fucking love the guy. Yeah. And and uh, and I remember, uh, and I don't even remember because it was. I asked a, a couple of the other guys from Miami, and I don't even remember who the fuck I asked. Maybe it was. I mean, maybe, maybe it was you. I don't even know. Um, but uh, I was like, man. I'm like I. Uh, I'm like I, really. I can't fucking understand like the word he says like that accent. And they're like, Oh no, dude! Like that's not an accent. We don't know what the fuck he's talking about either. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like he just talks fucked up, man. I, get, I got a friend like that. His name's CB. He's just like he just. It sounds like gibberish, but we understand it. Like from being Florida in the South. So we played football in like Eau Claire, Wisconsin, together, semi pro ball and stuff. And um. It was funny because, like, every time um, he starts talking, people would be like, uh, look at one of us and be like, I need a translator. Can you translate <laughs> what he's saying? And it's like he's speaking English, but he's just like, shit, motherfucker, man, I don't, don't want to go to this shit in a minute. Like, it's like, but we understand him. And <laughs> well, I, I have a, a friend, a co-worker, and a, and, a, and a friend. I've known him for 25 years, so I suppose he's my friend. Um, and uh, I think he's born in Georgia, but don't quote me on that. But he also has a... a, a uh, uh, well, they uh, have a little uh, bit a more pretty, of an accent. A, yeah, a pretty, uh, yeah. And uh, I swear to God, he uses it uh, to his advantage. Well, would um, when he is being asked questions, like at work, you know, if he gets into a situation where he don't fucking know the answer, <laughs> right? He just does a shimmy shaman. Yeah. And then, <laughs> and then nobody, it's impossible to understand what he's saying. Yeah. And, but you, you can't keep going what? What did you say? Because then you're a fucking racist, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I, so, so no, I you just don't understand. <laughs> I'm, it's I'm, like dealing with I'm those people you. when you call for customer service and you're like, oh, I'm, what? I'm, what did you I'm say? I'm telling you, I have watched people go like, ask him a question. He gives them the shima shama. And then they're like, okay. okay. Yep. <laughs> and they're just, Thank and you. that's, and it just on to the next question. Yeah. And it's like, hmm, Really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what? I know you don't know the answer to that question. <laughs> you just shimmy shamed him. 
Hey, if it works, it works. Yeah, hey, sure. he's, he's yeah, actually yeah. He's pretty brilliant at it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a smart tactic. Right? Kind of makes I, me wanna, uh, I have another funny story about him, but uh, <laughs> I, don't, I think I can tell it. Uh, I won't be breaking any any confidentiality. confidentiality. Yeah. Um, we're sitting around in a, in a meeting, and, and uh, uh, somebody comes in and says, uh, there's a person up front, and this is not the name of the person, um, but we're going to go with... Uh, uh, Shaniqua, right? Okay. So she, they're like, there's a, there's a, 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 a woman up front. Uh, her name's uh, Shaniqua, and uh, uh, the guy that I work with goes, "Oh, sister," and we're all like, "You can't just make that assumption." And he goes, "Uh huh." Uh-huh. That's that's <laughs> pretty. That's I, a pretty uh, fair assumption. Like, I I actually was surprised because I have a, um, the principal at my job. She has one of those names. Like at the school, she her name's Letitia, and for the longest I always thought like before I met her, I thought okay, you know she's Letitia. Oh, there's another black person up here, and uh, nope, she's a white lady. Huh. But when you have the qua, yeah, that's definitely a sister. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> well, I well, that's just, that's right. just, but I mean, <laughs> like, <laughs> it was just it was one of those situations where like. And they're all social workers, you know, so yeah. it's very, you know, everybody's <laughs> pretty prim and proper yeah. for the most part. Yeah. And we're like, you can't say that. And he's like, hmm, yeah, yeah, I think I can. <laughs> and like, whatever. So somebody goes up there, comes back, and she, we're all just like looking at Waiting him. to find out. See, that's one of those things that he could say, but if you would have set up people that would have been like, <gasps> <laughs> yeah. Yep. 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 <laughs> I don't know. It was funny. I feel like I'm skating on on uh, on thin ice, thin ice on in, in that. But I yeah, it's definitely it was definitely a funny thing. So. Yeah. I mean, it's it's understandable. It's one of those names. That <laughs> if you said, oh yeah, we're gonna have Shaniqua on the show next week, I was like, oh shoot, a, like a black chick. What does she do? Uh, I right. probably ask you questions on it, but it's, right. you just don't really hear like that name. Well, yeah, man. I mean, if we were like, okay, next week we're gonna have Jamal on the show, <laughs> and uh, in, in a like red. a, a, a red headed dude walking out here and said some red headed white dude said, people would be like, fuck me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, so I was doing some screen, uh, some play writing. We were doing um, a reading, a play. Uh, we did a reading for some kids at school. They they did this little program where the kids wrote their own screenplays, and they, we had a, a read aloud or whatever. Um, where we sat up there and they had some of the staff members help them out and read some of their plays for an audience. And there was characters. And then he goes, well, okay, I need somebody to play a Trevor. And I was like, nah. <laughs> I'm looking, I'm the only black person too. So I'm like, like, you know, I was like, nah, can't. no, it was Tyrone. It was Tyrone. That's what it was. It was worse. It was Tyrone. And I was like, nah. I shook my head. I'm looking around. I was like, not doing it. <laughs> right away and it was like so one of the girls next to me starts laughing and i was like i mean i just feel like i'm gonna set my culture back a couple of years if i take this role <laughs> so i was like i'll pass on it and so she's like well you can do the next one and i was like all right i'll do the next one all right so this one you'll be leroy and i was like nope not doing that one either how about i just read the next play <laughs> so so i passed it up and took gary <laughs> that's my character <laughs> <laughs> no, and it's just, I was just messing around too at the same time, but it's just like, it's one of those things that I felt like when everybody else sat in the audience, because it was, a, we had a nice audience of like some um, um, community leaders, some leaders for the tribal reservation and stuff that watch for the kids' plays. So it's like, I felt like if I go in here and um, I'm going to go read this play and it's like, oh, a Tyrone, oh, he would play that role. Right. <laughs> and then Tyrone, it was, it, it happened to be a kid that um, was in love with like rap music too. So then his play was about Tyrone who was beefing with his cousin Leroy who uh, stole his beats and his tracks and ended up getting a record deal. And then he ended up shooting his cousin. Yeah, and I was like, <laughs> yeah, I'm glad I didn't take that yeah, role. No, no. <laughs> so what, what was Gary about? What, did, what was Gary's to do? So Gary was just a, um, actually it was almost, it was. <laughs> So Gary actually had a similar role. Oh, so <laughs> Gary, it wasn't it wasn't the same thing, but Gary. So Gary's typecasting. I know Gary's Gary's character had to talk about um, he it was a a guy that owed him money, so I had to press him for my money, and I had to give him two weeks or else. So I was like, you know, where my money at? <laughs> so it's like then I'm sitting up here embracing this whole pimp vibe because I'm not like that's what I'm hearing in my head when I hear like where my money at. 
you know, you got two weeks or else. <laughs> <laughs> so, and that's, and I mean, that's what, that was Gary's character. So it was funny that like, I just passed up on Leroy and Tyrone for those reasons of the names. And then, <laughs> then I get Gary who's like, then Gary too, which is I need my money <laughs> <laughs> right now. So speaking of roles, <laughs> now I've got a question for him. So all the stuff in like, uh, all this shit in Hollywood with, uh, um, like casting. Okay. Yeah. Do you feel like that? I mean, do you think... Are you going to bring up the whole me? Ariel thing? Do you agree with me that that shit Ariel. is out of control? It like, is. It it's so like, crazy. It doesn't piss me off. But I'm like, like when I heard that like they wanted... Uh, because there's a, there's a... Apparently, there's people out there that want the next James Bond to be a black woman. And I'm like, James Bond? What the it's, fuck? It, would, like, be, it would be different. But I mean, like when you look at a lot of movies, they're all... Like, they're movies. So, you know... You can get any character, just like um, watching Fresh Prince and you watch um, Aunt Viv change. <laughs> you know, you watch a character change. It's like, you can't just switch this lady up. Like, we didn't watch the whole first five seasons. <laughs> we've, we've grown to love her. This was Aunt Viv. Who's this lady? You know? So it, it's one of those things where it, 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 well, I, I don't think it really matters. Um, speaking as a white person. We can't tell you apart anyway. Oh, yeah. yeah. I know. <laughs> I know. I was like, Trust me. I was like, Aunt Viv changed? No, yeah. I, I never actually. <laughs> no, but uh, you, because I saw the whole Ariel thing, and I'm like, people are mad about this. Well, see, uh, here's uh, my girl take on being the whole Ariel. Ariel thing, is that, like, fucking redheads are going extinct, man, and there aren't very many of them left. So you want to keep the redhead alive? Actually, but I, was the I, I was the last know. was the last Ariel redhead though in the movie? Well, I'm not sure. There was a fucking movie. I like. I, saw, I just. I, saw, I don't think the there was a. Yeah, I'm only. Yeah, really, the cartoon. So if yeah, they made an redhead. actual. So if they made an actual movie, I don't think they really had to make a redhead. All, well, all my only hope is that like in the new movie release, it has a. A uh, bag of dicks on the cover, like the <laughs> original. Um, you, you guys know about that little yeah, little tiny yeah. piece of. They had so, a bag. Okay, so Disney was going through some fucking. No, oh, I do address that I am not a fucking expert, by the way. So this is a non-expert opinion. We're not that experts. Is probably on complete bullshit. Yeah, but I'm not either. And cause it was we're, we're talking about black people and culture, and I'm not like this uh, black expert. <laughs> <laughs> there was did. this. Uh, uh, Disney was going through some budget cuts or some shit like that, and they were going to fire this fucking guy, uh -huh. uh, lay this guy off who was designing the cover for the Little Mermaid. And it's a it's like a castle, mm -hmm. you know, and then like with whatever. And he drew a bunch of fucking dicks in there. Right. Yeah, this and it's very, but yeah, yeah. I, I want to see this. Yeah. I think you can, I think you can Google find it. it. Google. It's yeah. a nice castle. It'd be a shame if somebody it drew just dicks. Just a dick. <laughs> Here's another dick. <laughs> Here's some balls. I mean, I'm totally uh, putting some balls don't on roll, there. Roles change so much in casting in different movies. But I'm totally and fine with Ariel being black. I don't care. She's got to be a the, red, the, black, well, red The Ariel she, thing she doesn't fucking matter to me at all, you know? But it matters to a lot of people. I saw, so I saw this interview on TV. what color is a mermaid? Um, I it's don't a know. fucking mermaid. Yeah. It's not. Yeah, a yeah. talk and, about and a different and that was the race. Thing. And that was the thing. I saw this. Um, one of the act, uh, actress did an interview about the whole Ariel Black thing, and she made a very valid point. It's like you know, all these people are pissed off about Ariel being black, but when you realize the reality of the whole movie, it's a mermaid talking to a crab and a fish, and uh, I mean, she didn't make this point, but she was pretty much. Stalking a prince <laughs> 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 had posters on his wall, on her wall, and of him, all this stuff. But I mean, like, how do you get mad at the character when the whole movie is like, it's it's for, fantasy, it's for entertainment, it's fucking like a mythical creature. Yeah, it's for entertainment. Know, to me, it doesn't matter if Ariel was black or white. I don't care. Um, I, I understand the point of like trying to include more black people in roles because you know you have a lot of movies. Like, if you follow like um, the Grammys and stuff like that, you you get a lot of movie roles that um for years it's always like the black people get snubbed for their films for um a a big white role movie or something and it, it, it's it so i understand you know trying to put more black people into bigger roles and, and casting them giving the opportunities yeah. and i think it's good it's, it's, Perry it's, can't do it's, all it's part himself. of yeah it's his, right his yeah his fucking suck by the way yeah it, it's, it's just like including it's being more inclusive for everything it's just like um Aren't they gonna have like a gay superhero or something like that? I think. Yeah, you know, but th then I heard I talks keep about, stuff that. about that, and I'm like, how about just a superhero that happens to be gay? Let's not make the focus of it like a gay superhero. Yeah, yeah, no, and, I, and that's exactly, I, yeah. And like for me, like I'm, and of course this is my uh, subject that's near and dear to me because I'm a fucking nerd. But um, you know, like there's like Marvel has had 
like gay superheroes for fucking like twenty years, thirty years, or whatever. Yeah. Like um, that's why like I'm a, like Alpha Flight. I don't know if you're familiar. Um, it was no, like Wolverine's team before he was an, an X Man and shit. Definitely it's a, nerd. It's a Canadian fucking Canadian super group. Um, or not Canadian. Super this group, is why he dresses his like penis up in Marvel uh, <laughs> characters and stuff. This is that's one of the many reasons. Um, but uh, uh, like there was a you know like one of the one of the like found, one of the main members in that team was gay and I'm like well fuck then I want my Alpha Flight movie you want you'll, you'll get your gay superhero fucking great yeah but uh, you know I mean and that's why I, it's I don't think it, it I'm excited matter. about Who Fabulous cares? Man is that his name oh <laughs> I mean, that's really Fabulous Man <laughs> I don't know do I don't think I got anything to say. You should just have no, a normal name. I, I keep on having these thoughts, and then I'm like, like wanting to jump in, and I'm like, this shit's too good. Then I like, forget <laughs> where I'm at. Here, um, maybe you should give him the notepad. Oh no, I was thinking one thing. I was thinking about though is like, if if Ariel, uh, if the actress who plays Ariel is is black, and then the prince is is white. Um, it'll that's be like that's an, even better. It'll be like an inter. It'll that's be even like, better because you do be have an it. Inter- Seal relationship, you know, yeah. you got the mermaid. The, yeah, it'd be fucking great. Yeah. Um, w- one point about the, uh, uh, I don't know, gay uh, superhero. I don't know if this is really related. But uh, did you guys? Any, did either of you watch the new um, Star Trek? Uh, I've never watched any Star Trek. Okay, well, yeah. I'm a fucking geek, but I, uh, I not no, I, I was I like kind of boycotted it because it was season? on their pay site thing or whatever. The you had to pay for it uh, if if we're. Are we talking about the movies or the the new the, the new spin-off the new the TV series? series? Yeah, oh. yeah, I haven't oh. watched any of it. Okay, well, I thought it was great. I thought it was great. <clears throat> and there, but there is a uh, character in there. There's a two characters in there. One of them is a doctor, and the other one is like um, I don't know, something fucking runs the kind of like the engineer or whatever. Mm-hmm. And they're told and they're gay, and one of them is black and one of them is white, and it's so not a thing. It's so not made a thing. Yeah. It's just one of those. That's like, the way it and I was be like, done, bam, think. that is well done. Because it wasn't like, oh, here, let's, here's our, here's our gay uh, character and here's our black character. Oh my God, the gay character is also black. No, nah, it's just like, yeah. do, boom. Make them make out the, to make it official. Like, no, you don't have to do all yeah, that. Yeah, it was all completely. Yeah. And I thought, God damn, really, really well done. Good for you, Star Trek. Hey, Star Trek's always been cool like that. I mean, Look at uh, you know. Look at Captain Kirk. Captain Kirk was like banging green girls and like what? I like. I mean, it didn't fucking matter. You know, like he just threw it down. Like I, he probably gave fucking syphilis to goddamn the known. I was galaxy, wondering where you're know? going with that. Because uh, I mean, and like you know, totally like woke in the whole feminist realm. You know, he was uh-huh. just such a. Okay. He banged green girls. He did such. bang some green girls. Mm. Yeah, I haven't gotten into any of that stuff yet. <laughs> oh. Green Girls or Star Trek? Yeah, yeah. Right. Right. mainly Star Trek. I'm not even <laughs> saying it was. Yeah, I just I'm a I'm kind of a Star Trek geek, so oh, I like that right. shit. And a Star too. I just Wars haven't watched any of that. I mean, I love the geek. movies. I love the fucking, you know I, I love that shit. But the last one, I just I was like, oh, I'm not gonna pay for an, yet another damn you know service to watch TV on because I fucking watch way too much TV. Anyway. Well, they have some free. Porn subscriptions. You can cut a service and then. Well, that I actually belong to a lot of those. I know. That's what I'm saying. If you cut one of those subscriptions, maybe you can make room oh, for. Us. Let's not talk crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that's not fucking happening. <laughs> <laughs> I get my, uh, I get my green girl fix on Pornhub. Yep. So. <laughs> uh, Pornhub does not sponsor this program, but not at all. But if they want to, um, they can do that by. That would be amazing. That would be amazing. Man, and there's what? a socially conscious like now they're like saving bees and stuff, you know. Like they, I mean, bees. That, that that's a cool company, really. Yeah. What? How are they saving? The I bees? mean, I heard about this. I read it somewhere. <laughs> oh, I had a little girl <laughs> told me a really funny joke at the bar. She goes, um, "What did she say?" She goes, "What kind of bees don't fly?" Do you know this? Boobies. Uh, <laughs> she was a young girl too, and I was like, "Wait, how do?" You, why, do you, why are you telling this joke? Like, how do you know? Why are you sitting next like, to me at a bar? <laughs> <laughs> well, she was with her parents, but I, I, just, I really thought it was like, on your lap. And so shit. now you're talking about porn up saving bees, and yeah. I'm like, is that part of their trend? You know, it probably will be now if anyone uh, there uh, yeah, watching this. <laughs> this is a way off the subject, but Save fuck it, I'm just going to go there. Um, a long time ago, back uh, kind of around the time The Shine was closing, um, uh, Phil and I were batting around an idea of actually starting a... Uh, like a porn site 
it, it had it, it came up but the, we had this idea um oh shit what's the movie oh the night shift yeah <laughs> uh, and you know that was where the um where the fawns like uh, uh, became the pimp for all the hookers. Remember? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. And and they were and they were and they were all equally, you know, e- they all shared equally or whatever. Yeah. And then um yeah so I I can't write. We had a fucking clever ass name too. I cannot remember what it is. But the whole idea was it was like uh it was um uh, fair trade porn. You know, like was the idea that was like the tagline. There you go. <laughs> yeah. We we never got off the uh, out of the conversation. Well, stage, you already have your starting point now. You got your. Star over here with his uh, oh yeah costumes, costumes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah dress those dicks up <laughs> hey you might make a really good business people take photos of um, their dogs <laughs> is that similar yeah, <laughs> dress them up <laughs> <laughs> you like the like Ann Getty's pictures only different <laughs> very very different who's that? Well, that was the lady that would like put the like uh, she put all uh, babies in all these adorable costumes you know you like just compared your dick to babies are you serious. <laughs> well, it's because it's a baby dick. <laughs> <laughs> Touche. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> one last thing. I don't know if it's the last thing, but one thing I didn't want to forget to cover. Uh, last week we talked about the uh, the circle flag. Um, yeah. Oh, the Confederate the flag, flag or something. Yeah. And um, that uh, apparently it you you recap that part. Um, well, we talked about Colin Kaepernick and stuff. Yeah, so Colin Kaepernick. Like Colin Kaepernick. Uh, you know, puts a call in. He's like, guys, like, you know, like white supremacists have, you know, kind of made this flag their own, you know, like, do you mm-hmm. really want to make a shoe like that? You know, like, and they, you know, and of course, you know, Nike, like, Pulled looks, it. At, you know, looks it up and they're like, well, shit, that's true. You know, like, yeah, they kind of have. So, um, you know, then they're like, well, we're not going to fucking make that shoe then. We don't want to be associated with those guys. Okay. Solid business move. Normal kind of shit. Like, you know. Mm-hmm. And then but the bunch of people, people from the right kind of got their fucking freaked minds. out by it. God damn it. Blah, blah, blah. But, but the people that lost their minds were probably the people that feel a certain way about the issue, you know? And right. so, like, they had the, the original they Confederate flag that you they see have a lot. Black friends. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the original <laughs> Confederate flag was the one that you, you know, you see everybody on the back of trucks, but then they make that illegal to stop. Not illegal, something? but they don't, you, like, they, they've taken it off of a lot of state flags and stuff like that, you yeah. know? Cause like, but then I know that's just another one. I mean, it's, like I said, it's just, it comes down to a lot of uneducated people not saying that they're not educated they're just not educated on certain things sure. so you can't be all about inclusive in- inclusivity or inclusive well, I think that's it. Works. Yeah, that we, works we, we've <laughs> decided uh, or Any I've decided works. that we can just make up fucking okay, words on this yeah. program so. but you can't be all about it and then not accept other aspects of it so it's like okay well you you can understand and feel a certain way but then a Colin Kaepernick taking a knee and like a lot of people get, took that really personal yeah. and it's like but it's not disrespecting the army veterans or nothing like that. That's not well, what it was about. And a buddy of mine just uh, the other day, uh, we, were, we, were, we were talking about this, and he was like, man, he's like, have you been to a, have you, have you been to a game? Yeah. You know, he's like, during the national anthem, he's like, just look around. Like, There's a lot of people sitting down. Man. Exactly. They're exactly. sitting down, they're on exactly. their phones, they're fucking, you know, like, doing all kinds of other shit. So, like, so really, like, what the yeah. fuck are you mad about? You know, like, lighten the fuck up. Because like, they got called out for being white supremacists, that's why. Yeah. They probably have the flag at home somewhere and got upset. That's probably what it comes down to because you, you don't get mad at something. Like they say the guilty, like when you're guilty of something, you get really mad yeah. and you speak up and get loud about it. So the people that are like really speaking out and acting like that, they're probably guilty of certain feelings. And that's just what it comes down to. Because my, like my brothers are in the army and they would take a knee because they understand what it symbolized. It never symbolized um, disrespect towards army vets or anything you know and then you can go into depth about the the song the song really wasn't it it was a poem that was written and that was one of the verses in the poem and it actually came down to being um i'm I'm not this big like (laughs) but no it actually came down to um being about um like the destruction of like black people who were fighting in the army at that time um I forgot for which side I can't remember, but um, the the poem was really like racist, like talking about like like their blood shed and all this other stuff, hmm. and that's the national anthem. But you got mad when he knees for it. Do you, so do you know they have actually have a black national anthem? 
<laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah, they do. <laughs> they do? But yeah, you should How many times it does it say ho in it? <laughs> no, at all. <laughs> at all. It don't say ho, bitch, drinking 40s, <laughs> tap that ass, none of that. Um. <laughs> Uh, no, I, but I yeah, know but it is they performed do. by have, Snoop Dogg. I yeah. am going to Google this. They shit, do though. have a black national anthem because it's same situation as like when I said I had my shirt on for the Fourth of July. You know, yeah. a lot of people don't know. So like you would have saw uh, you wouldn't, have, but if somebody would saw my shirt and got really offensive, like that's disrespectful. You're disrespecting Independence Day, but it was Independence Day for who? It wasn't for me because as my culture and my race, black people weren't free when the Declaration of Independence was signed. You know, so you might take it disrespectful because you didn't know that. Right. But if you know that, it won't be disrespect, you know, or if you're open to listening to that, it won't be disrespect. And it's the same thing with, you know, the Kaepernick and the flag and all that other stuff. If you know the reality behind things, some people do know that the national anthem was based on like a sonnet from a poem. And then it was uh, one of the parts that talked about like the, the destruction of slaves and like yeah, th- and all that other that. stuff. Yeah, and then, um, but they still support it and don't care. It's America, you know. It, it's what it is, and it's not. It's not. I'm, I'm well, American. I'm an American citizen. It's I don't America. have to agree. America, yeah. I don't. I, <laughs> I, I don't have to agree with everything. Even being an American citizen, you don't agree with all the laws in place. You don't yeah. agree with how much you should get taxed. You know, stuff like that. You know, it's you can be American and still not agree with everything yeah. that is American. Dissent is very right. patriotic. Of yeah. course. Mind, yeah. the, the thing that's a little crazy come now, though, is that um, that's, been, that's been like the that's been the foundation of America yeah. is this in, um, engaging of dissent. Yeah. And now it seems like everybody has picked their side and it gets so hard to, to have any kind of conversation yeah. about it and I think a lot of that's fair I did want to say though in the last episode I made a comment uh, um, uh, Kyle said something to the extent of Betsy Ross I'm not saying Betsy Ross was a racist and I said what well fucking of course she was a racist it was like a million years ago and everybody was a fucking racist I mean she owned slaves or, or she probably owned slaves or something like that and yeah. I got corrected on Facebook um, and uh, uh, I was like huh interesting I actually didn't know that it was a very small uh, percentage of Americans that actually were slave owners um, at the time. 3%, I think, is what, what the said on there. And I did some research, and it seemed like it was about right. And more than likely, Betsy Ross wasn't. She was a Quaker, and Quakers ended up oh, like kind of leading the charge to, to, to end yeah, slavery. The mm-hmm. movement, um, uh, so cool. I was totally fucking wrong. Yeah. <laughs> right. Hey, um, we're but there's nothing experts. wrong. You're not perfect. And it's just, you can admit it. And yeah. yeah. No. And I don't mind being corrected. If there's shit, if, if you guys hear shit out there uh, where we are uh, talking out of our asses, um, realize a, we are actually talking out of our asses and B, um, yeah, let us know what's up. I'm, I'm, I'm that willing doesn't to mean we want to argue every fucking dumbass <laughs> opinion you have, though. I mean, like if, if like something factual, and we're I talking mean, to you, we're talking about facts, you know, yeah. not Right. Fucking, you know, but I like debate, you know, I like sure. debate and I like uh, I'm interested in what, in what people have to say. I actually thought it was kind of interesting. It led me down a kind of a, a little bit of a of a Google rabbit hole. Yeah. Um, and I'm like, cool. I mean, should awesome. we learn shit? I mean, we learn shit. I, I, you know, I, I'm, I've learned shit right now in this fucking episode. Yeah, know, see, yeah. like, I, I, then my, I, I might have to create a Facebook just to hear s- and see some of these <laughs> reactions because I'm kind of curious because, uh, like, I don't remember the whole, like, um, part of the national anthem. But like I said, it is like if you read it. You'll in, see. You're talking like we about should, reading like the entirety of the poem. No, yeah, no. You can just read that one part not, that not, the national anthem is. If you really read, you have to read like a little bit probably before it or so. But if you read it, you'll see, and it it'll make sense of what everything was about. And that's why a lot of people um, from like black culture didn't really respect that. But then uh, I was talking to somebody, and, this, and they made a very great point, And this is true. You see a lot of people that get pissed off at that whole Kaepernick thing and you don't stand for the flag and uh, you're kneeling, but there's the same people that probably are sitting in the stands at games that don't stand. It's yeah. the same people that are probably Absolutely. at uh, any event, a race. Um, I went to a 4th of July parade up in Gilbert, Minnesota. There's a lot of guys that didn't even take off their hats while the flags was walking past. You know, isn't that a symbol of respect too? 
So you just pick and choose and get mad. And and to be honest, it was all a, it was all an advertisement ploy anyway because the the army wasn't even they weren't getting a ton of recruits. And I think it was along the extent of what they needed to um, embrace their presence and, and and make it a bigger impact. So they pay the NFL to have the national anthem sung, and they go out there and do the whole flag thing. That started like a couple of years back because before that they never did any of that. No, no, there wasn't they, nearly as much pageantry involved. No, no, it didn't. So I think it it became like a, a marketing tool. So then it was expected because before I think it was maybe in 2012. So was it 2010? Some people will correct you guys and talk crap. I don't care. <laughs> I don't have Facebook, so <laughs> screw you. So you just um, just throw out whatever. Yeah, just, yeah, I mean, throw it out like it's a fact. That's yeah. usually the yeah, way. Well, that's what yeah. we like to do. That's well, how we do it. it's a fact today. <laughs> um, so <laughs> no, but yeah, it wasn't it wasn't around back then. So like, are these people st- mad at the NFL for not having the national anthem back then? You know, so you can't you 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 can look at things and get really pissed off the aerial thing you got all these other issues going yeah. on you can get pissed off or you can just say who cares it's no real big deal you know it, it it there's always something that's different and if you're really changing things things are changing in the u.s period there's it's constantly changing and you have more inclusive uh and more diversity and now like lgbtq is a big thing and you have all that stuff going on well, I'm actually surprised they didn't change the national anthem yet because of what it was written off of and right. how it was written. So it's like things change. Just be happy it hasn't changed and, and enjoy what you have right now because yeah. it can change in a couple of years. And don't be so damn afraid to change. Yeah. And it, that's a big thing, too. We have to I, I think that that's something really big that I'd like to see more people in this town alone. And I would love to like be um, if we had community meetings and discuss stuff like this, because I think there is a lot of notions and I'm speaking from this perspective. And I know like this podcast is probably going everywhere and not just in Brainerd, Minnesota. Well, at least that's I mean, the hope it's available for the entire hey, world. That's a fact. You know? uh, yeah, that's a fact. <laughs> it's, it's, w- this is international. <laughs> 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 this, this podcast is international, which is a fact. So I'm, I'm, I'm speaking from like directly in this area though, but, um, it, it, there does need to be more dialect about certain issues and certain things amongst different people, different groups. And some people are scared of it because you don't know what's going to come from it. And you're scared of like maybe being called out on your own issues and your own demons. But it's I think it's a, a great conversation point to or, to even, build a friendship, a relationship, to build a, a business. Um cultural diversity trainings where you can actually talk about stuff on the reservation. Um it was something that came up because lice is a thing in just people's hair period so um we had a training on, on how to properly check for lice and stuff like that and i was telling one of the coworkers, i was like oh yeah i, I can't get it's lice. less of a thing for man right? yeah yeah, we, I, yeah i can't get <laughs> yeah. lice but i was like i can't get lice and they was like why can't you well, mind you i had dreads all the way down to my ass and it's like because um they don't survive in black people's hair and she didn't believe me. So then she asked the trainer. Is that true? I never, yeah, the, I never heard the, of that. Um, the nurse actually confirmed it. She, well, her, they use the term ethnic hair. But, you ethnic know, it's, hair. yeah. <laughs> that's very that's, PC, that's, 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 I think that's the cosmetology term for black people's hair. You have very ethnic hair. I guess it's better than saying, damn, you're shit nappy. <laughs> 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 but, uh, no. <laughs> Not gonna walk in there and be like, "Hey, can you do something for me for my hair?" Uh, yeah, take this fucking lunch. Oh, you have very ethnic ass. hair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, yeah. So she asked the trainer, and the trainer away said when that. I found yeah. out that like, there's like whole lines of like, I never. It's something I never thought of before, you know, um, until I actually like, you know, lived with you know, a, like uh, some African American folks, and I'm like. Uh, there's whole like lot product lines yeah. for your you know for skincare and hair care and shit like that something I never thought about until I'm like I'm in the bathroom and I'm like fucking crazy sweet look <laughs> they got them in Walmart <laughs> they, they're not a sponsor either but if they want yeah. to I think they would love that also but uh, <laughs> Walmart has a lot of good black hair care products in their stores even yeah. for that to be you know even in this little town, they have some good stuff, and it's it's well, and nice. Like, why did I never think of that? Like, why did I? Why did that never occur to me? I guess it wasn't really on my radar. You know, I mean, the only thing I like, Soul Glow was the only thing I ever. <laughs> that show, Jerry Soul Curl, Glow. Jerry Curl. That's no, like, Cody. Uh, yeah. So I was I was giving Cody my ID. Actually, I didn't give him my ID. I gave my wrist so he can wristband me at Zorba's a couple of weeks back, and he goes, "Damn, your skin's really soft." 
And I was like, yeah, that's all that cocoa butter. And he goes, <laughs> I was like, that's why, uh, I was like, um, that's why you say black don't crack. <laughs> <Or whatever>. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, it, he, it was just funny. He was talking about the product lines and stuff like that. And that's one of those stereotypes that all black people use cocoa butter. I actually don't. I don't really like the scent of like vanilla beans or cocoa butter that much. <laughs> But um, can no. you get kicked out of the black race? Is that a? Uh, I think they've done it on Dave Chappelle skits a couple times <laughs> for different people. And well, they had like the racial draft and yeah. stuff, which I thought was kind of yeah. cool. And then they also had like I always wanted to like be a contestant on like the real uh, um, Housewives like, of I know, Atlanta. No, <laughs> that'd be cool. <laughs> um, the, uh, uh, I know black people. Remember that game show? On no, there? I didn't see that. Oh man, yeah, it was it was a great skit. Uh, um, and they had like a it, w- it was kind of set up like Jeopardy and shit like that so these people had to ask these questions and they're like that is the oh, correct no, answer Google that shit that's a fucking funny skit yeah uh, it, it, the last Dave Chappelle comedy uh, sketch was or comedy um, he's a fucking uh, brilliant guy oh you mean his um, Netflix specials yeah, yeah. they so were great fucking funny they were great so funny and he touched base on a lot of real issues too yeah, like, he did we, yeah, we yeah. talked about like stand up and stuff in the last show um you know, like that's one area where I feel like I feel like like fucking comedians make a big impact because you get people laughing about shit. You know, you're thinking about it, you're laughing about it. You know, you you, you break down some barriers and shit like yep. that. You know, like I mean, like fucking you know, like guys like Chris Rock and fucking Dave Chappelle have done some. You know, like have been I think fucking huge. You know, and important. You know, people yeah. like that. But don't they say? Uh, isn't it a saying about? Um um, there's a there's truth in every like when people joke and stuff like that, oh. you know. And well, that, I, mean, I mean that makes sense. I don't know. Too. Like, I think the the thing that inspired me to want to become do stand up. I shouldn't say want to become a stand up comic because that implies that like you are. I've ever I made a living. Yeah, you made it. it. But I've always wanted to do or I wanted to stand up for many many years. And it was this. Uh, it was a comedy um, uh, tape back in the day and it was it was rick reynolds was the comic's name Mm -hmm. he doesn't exist anymore but and but his his thing was only the truth is funny that was the name of his of his thing and he's and he he, it was great it was half like motivational speaking half comedy but he like came out there and like basically said like you're gonna have to you're gonna have to believe me for this to work all right Mm -hmm. and i promise i'm gonna tell you the truth today um you know it, and he goes on and he tells about it and he says, no, I, u- I used to have some, you know, some funny shit in my, in my act that, but it wasn't true. And I've cut that all out. And, and you know, and then he'd teach, he'd tell some of the jokes anyway. And it was fucking great. And I just thought, yeah. And I was, and that was it my, is. and, but it's, but it, it really is. If there isn't an element of truth in it, it's, it's, it's not, not fun. Yeah. 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 And that's what I said earlier when you were talking about yeah. comedy and, and being able to implement um, certain jokes about race and stuff like that. And I was like, yeah, comedy is the best platform for it because you have to have some relation to it and it has to be kind of true. Yeah. So like you probably can make a joke on racism and certain people that are racist would laugh who swear they're not because in reality there's some truth behind <laughs> what's going on. Right. And well, it should so be kind of a universal that's why, like, truth. That's kind of like when I said like, 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 if I, you know, will I, will I laugh at a joke that I know has like a race element, race element and stuff? Like, yeah, probably yeah. the same one that you would laugh at that you would laugh at. You know, like, I mean, and you're like, well, some shit is just funny, man. Yeah. You know, I mean, fuck. But you have to be able to laugh. You can't take life too serious. No. Like, there is a time to be serious, but you can't let it pass you by trying to be serious all the time <laughs> and all angry about the life and everything. I think Dave Chappelle saved my life. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I was, this was years and years ago, but I uh, was, uh, uh, I went home to uh, uh, watch a, a movie mm-hmm. and my wife was out of town at the time, well not Mary anymore, but at the time she was out of town and I told uh, one of my coworkers or one of my employees at the time um, that I was going to go home and watch this movie and she's like, oh, what movie are you watching? And I said, oh, uh, Million Dollar Baby. <laughs> and she goes, oh, okay, cool. And then like, whatever. And I didn't know anything about it other than like, it was about boxing, cool, yep. and like uh, Clint Eastwood, man, fuck yeah, yeah, perfect. Clint Eastwood, Bad News Bears, it's gonna be fucking great. Uh, go home, watch this fucking horrible movie, <laughs> <laughs> and I, I'm like, I can't stop crying. I'm laying there on the couch. I'm like fucking like convulsing. I'm all by myself. I'm drunk. <laughs> it's just bad. And I'm just like, I can't, I cannot go to sleep unless 
I feel like this man. And I fucking turn on the TV and I turn around and Dave Chappelle's first comedy, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, whatever they're called, it's a con- comedy show, like, you know, whatever. And I'm laying there and I'm still can't stop crying. And yet, Dave's a funny motherfucker. And I was like, <laughs> That's really funny. <laughs> you know, it's just horrible. So, so he, he pulled me out of the darkness. He's got and a bit uh, that, uh, that I always thought, like, it, it, I kind of felt that shit. It was, I always thought it was pretty funny. It's like, um, and, I th- and I think about it uh, from time to time, like, when we'd all go out and shit, you know, like, um, and it was, uh, you know, because, like, like, we'd all go out and shit, you know, and, like, and, you know, like, I'd, I'd see the shit, the, like, the weird shit that, uh, like, people would say mm-hmm. to, like, you and Cash and stuff. And, uh, you know, and, and I'm like, man, look at these guys and their, you know, these people and their fucking weird assumptions and shit. You know, and and I'm like, man, you know, like, and then I, th- I'm, you know, I think about like, I'm like, man, I'm like, I'm probably like, I've probably been in like, in, I've probably been in jail like more than fucking. I mean, like, I, I, you know, and I'm thinking about like, and I think about like, this, you know, just shit like that. You know, like I'm in a fucking knucklehead over the years. You know, I'm not, and you know, anyway, probably worse than some of the people you're hanging around well, and people think well, that they're worse. And, yeah. and Dave Chappelle, you know, and like, and he had, and that was actually. Uh, um, my friend Marvin that turned me on to it. He's like, he's like, listen, he's like, listen to this part. He's like, this reminds me of you. And it was, uh, he's like, yeah, man. He's like, he's talking about like, like, you know, it's, you know, I, I see this a lot, you know, like a, like a group of brothers and, and there's like, well, why always one white guy in the group? And, uh, they were like, he's like, they're like, and he, and he was like, man, he's like, you know who to watch out for? The white guy. Like, man, because you never know what that dude's done to get those brothers respect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, oh, shit that's funny but I fucking he's so goddamn funny he's just a brilliant guy Ugh. yeah I haven't even finished watching those Netflix specials though I've only watched one I need to watch the rest you of them you gotta watch the rest of them they're, they're really, really good. good they're really good they actually yeah. touch base on some of the stuff that pol- political stuff and some of the other stuff that we've been talking about he's always been yeah. money like that yeah. I mean he's a huge Trump supporter so yeah, yeah. he is very um, <laughs> anything else you got Kyle Man, that's it. Oh, yeah. I, uh, this has been a good one. This has this been a fun. Blast. I really need to stop procrastinating and getting mine up and going. Yeah, get the yeah. Shit, <laughs> together, <man>. get <laughs> shit together, man. Shit together. I'd fucking listen. Fuck yeah. Um, I don't even watch podcasts, but I'd watch your podcast. Yeah, yeah. It, it was an absolute pleasure to meet you. No, guys. thank you. Yeah, man. I, See, now super you can, cool guy. Now you met me. Yeah. And you can tell your wife. You, you Girlfriend, God damn it. Oh, girlfriend. You, he, he overcame <laughs> his fear. I yeah, did. Absolutely. He wore the shirt I with pride. I wore the shirt with pride. Yeah, that's awesome. All right. Very Thanks cool. for coming on, man. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty yeah. awesome. All right. Well, we'll see you guys next week. Uh, we don't know who we're going to have yet, but um, we'll get somebody cool. One of these days, like the guy, uh, one of these days we're going to get uh, my buddy Jim on. He's the guy that uh, um, actually corrected you on the, uh, um, that, that, uh, the yeah, percentage about the, of people that own the yeah. slaves and stuff like that. Yeah. He's a very sharp guy. Um, we need to get him on here. Um, Seems like he agrees with everything we say. Yeah, absolutely. We're in lockstep <laughs> opinion-wise. Right. <laughs> no, we're not. But, you know, but that's the beauty of it. You know, it's, it's a wonderful thing. Yeah, it'll be super fun. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, yeah. Thanks again, Ace. All right. We'll see you next time. See you. Bye.
You were great. Man. You're not feeling it? Oh, no, I'm actually, like, once we start talking, I'm like, oh, fuck. Okay, you know, this is fine. Yeah, you're But good. I'm just like, like, no, I'm, now I take the headset off, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> I think it was good to just put out there that you're hungover so we don't have to. Yeah.